Okay, so we're gonna line up our first four cars to lead the parade, and then we are gonna rock it out of here. Yeah, and we'll see you at the party. And I'm probably gonna drift this Nissan, is that okay? <laughs> All right, thanks Kevin, thanks Tanner, thanks AJ. How about another round of applause for AJ and Tanner? Congratulations to all of our winners. Yeah, congratulations everybody. I mean, this is incredible. You guys got to see all that happen, plus a little behind the scenes TV magic you probably weren't expecting either. Yes. And now one of the most fun Good job, Tanner. Fun parts of the same cruise is hearing cars light off. Hey, I need some help. I need some help from those of you who are in the bleachers towards the end where these cars are coming out. Similar to what Tanner was asking when he, he mentioned the word winner, and you guys were kind of just clapping and screaming, we need to kind of build up uh, this portion of the, the television filming. So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, when I say winner, give me, give me some love. Shout it out. All right, winner. Come on out, everybody. This is the beginning of the soup crew. Let's roll out some of these vehicles. All right, so that's exactly what we needed, but just not quite, because it's TV. It's okay for just being out here in Las Vegas. For TV, we need... So I'm gonna shout out the word winner. I need you to give me some love again. Winner! Right. Yes. And that was a lot better. I was wondering, but on this... This is Car Lover's Paradise right here. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, this wouldn't be any fun if it was just Joe and I. I'll tell you right now. So thank you for coming out. Well, okay, now these vehicles are with the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitation. We left that out early because they're going to be going to compete in this upcoming event which takes place this week. Uh, they've been a, a focal point outside of the show. These are probably some of the best of these by far some of the better performing vehicles that are on display in the show. The Optima Ultima is the kind of feature vehicles, everybody. Yeah, and in fact, the Optima Ultima helped start Our Santa cars, real cars, do they actually run and drive? So Optima batteries threw down the gauntlet and they said, hey, let's find out if anybody has what it takes to build a, a SEMA caliber car and then bring it out to race right after the show. So that was a few years ago, and today we're seeing this event grow and grow. They've got all kinds of uh, events around the country to help qualify to get these cars here. There was also a handful of golden ticket winners of people that were uh, given a, an expense paid trip here to the Super Cruise and the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. These are uh, real cars that bring a, a, a competition level to the SEMA show. We wish all of these drivers good luck and, uh, and hope they have a, uh, a safe but fast weekend racing at the Optima Streetcar Challenge. You know, Ken, the popularity of the Optima Streetcar Streetcar Invitational has grown so much over these last few years. I don't remember when we first launched this program, there may have been a couple dozen cars, and I believe it's over 100 and change now. And it's brought a certain caliber of builder, driver, and a team to the SEMA show. And to, to see these guys, and if you look at their faces, the fun. Well, you know, I wish those guys the best this weekend. I want to congratulate Cam and all this group over at Optima for doing a great job. They're doing a great job, and it's not just late model stuff like we're seeing. We've got uh, muscle cars, we've got some vintage import stuff. We've got about a 66 Ford Fairlight right there coming up. Behind us, Slip Bumper Camaro and a Miata. They set this competition so that all these guys can compete against each other with some kind of parity at the Optima Street Car Challenge. That little Miata is nasty sound. As tempting as it is to want to just reach in and talk to everybody, to try to keep it fluid, there's still so many cars, so selecting the world is supposed. All right. 
ultimate invitational is making it. Well, here's the piece that many folks are familiar with there. Hey, you better want to say hi to Jay Leno. Welcome to the scene to show, Jay Leno. Hey, Jay Leno. Well, we brought the head of OSTI on board, so hopefully we're going to kick it up a little. Jay, how are things with you? How was the show? You've been in enough of these shows. Did you? I'm really excited. I love that new Heavenly Motor from Chrysler. This is the new Lincoln. What can uh, folks see a little bit more about what's happening with you on television? Uh, well, we, we just got to shoot out of your season. Uh, so it'll be on again in the spring. The YouTube show is on. I love the show. I love the New York Big Hill fan. How about a nice scene of Cruz? Welcome to Jay Leno, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Leno. Jay Leno's Garage and Jay Leno's Garage Car Care Products. Do not, Joe. Don't forget about that. Uh, they were one of the more popular displays inside the Grand Lobby. I actually had an opportunity to sample some of that stuff before. Great job. I thought that was your new cologne. <laughs> I must admit, though, when I watched that episode when they flipped that Mopar, I was a little afraid, Ken. We were all a little afraid. But everything came out of okay. That was excellent television, though. That surely was. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the big Lincoln has your friend and mine, Mr. Jay Leno, on board. And he's driving with no hands. <laughs> yeah, give him your picture for a change. Right on. Once again, the parade of the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. Kevin, you would have died listening to me try to say that at 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh boy, I can tell. The great thing now is they put the uh, cue card right on the door. They got a big sticker there. Now you can read it right off. I was creating my note with my own name by the time the day was over. <laughs> well, it's about the only race out there at a, at a road course event where you're going to see, you know, six fair lanes versus Mon Monsignatas versus four-door twin turbo charges, Mercedes-Benz versus Viper. I mean, it, it's incredible. And it seems like it's a family affair, too. You'll notice that everybody's either got their a friend or their wife or brother riding shotgun. This uh, Optima event really is kind of a family deal as well, it looks like. Oh, it sure is. It's a chance for uh, for families. It's also a chance for professionals to get involved in professional jobs. Uh, our friends coming by from Detroit Speed with their third generation Camaro, the blue car there, revving it up for us. Detroit Speed has come up with a whole new line of parts for those cars because uh, they handle good from the factory, but not like that one. The cars continue to be popular in the show over the years, Kev. There's nothing better than hearing the sound of a little Yeah, that four or five little coyote motor definitely has a unique sound. And especially the Shelby version with that flat plane crank, man. When the up, you know it. One of my all-time favorite cars, the Buick Grand National. Uh, looking forward to seeing the increased popularity of the G-Body platform, the Grand National, Monte Carlo, even the Pontiac and the Hearst Oldsmobile, the 442s. These are great, great cars. Let's see real fast on this one. Uh, ask him if th that's still a six-cylinder. Ask him if it's still a Turbo 6. Still keeping it Turbo 6? Yes, it is. All right, so ask me, what did I do? Instead of buying the Buick, I'm finding Carlo SS with the Amidic 305. <laughs> and he lost all the that guy, instead of being that guy. Still a cool car, Jim. Well, I also have some other stories about those Buicks. You know, Reggie Jackson was a huge, huge, huge car collector. And at the time, when those GNS were coming out, I think the Trans Am also had that same engine in there. 89 Trans Am GTA did. Reggie bought like 60 of them. They put them all in a warehouse up in uh, Northern California, and unfortunately it burned down. But I knew those GNX and those Buicks were going to come back. Now we got some rolling big power of big. How about a nice rolling big power applause for our sponsor of the SEMA Cruise? Rolling big power! Yeah, it's here for rolling big power. All your truck guys had to sit through all that first line of performance race cars going by. Now we're going to start seeing some big trucks. And these are being built to higher and higher quality levels every single year. Thanks for bringing them out, guys. We really appreciate it. And Ken, I particularly want to thank this large group of Rolling Big Power. This guy's a good example. He was waiting hours on end, not only in line, but this thing sucked on gas, right? God knows how much money he was spending as he was waiting in line to get the vehicles moved in. And because they're so big, it's like a lifesaver roll. You have to kind of put them in a certain spot. 
and they waited patiently, and so did the sponsors. So not only do we appreciate all the effort of the sponsors, that's easy to just write a check. These guys actually have to kind of do the deal. So thank you. And once again, a nice big round of applause for all our RBP participants as they make their way through the Secret Room. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in addition to uh, the cool cars and trucks coming through, uh, our friend in here has given us a couple of hats that we're going to give away. We're throw these out to the crowd. Uh, but what we want to do, we're going to do one on this side, we're going to do one on the other side. These are brand new c 2018 hats. These are super, super cool. But what we're looking for is uh, a giant photograph of everybody reaching up and going crazy. But let's do this safely, right? right? We don't, we don't want people falling all over each other. So on the count of three, we're going to toss this hat out. And if somebody uh, catches this thing safely, it's a very cool scene. The Super Chuck. Are you ready, buddy? Here it comes. On one. On two. On three. Here it goes. Yay! That never quite works. 100 people and it hits the floor. Look. Nice job, guys. Let's go to the other side. Let's come up here a little bit. More awesome trucks coming through. We got a big red, white, and blue Ram. Loving that. All right, folks, uh, particularly those folks who are close to the action, we want you to get some tight shots, but just keep it uh, running nice and fluid. And then there's this guy, right? Nice. Where you go? Get me stuff. What? All right, I got another hat here we're going to throw up to the other side of the crowd here. Yeah, that's, there's the enthusiasm we want. Let's see everybody getting up and going crazy on the count of three so we can get some awesome pictures. This one's got a license plate on it. Ready? On one, on two, on three. Hit it, goes! <laughs> Be careful, folks. Thank you for coming. Here they come. They're still coming, kid. Well, somehow a roadster got stuck between all these trucks. I gotta figure out who the hell this guy is. Probably yeah. somebody that you know. So, so just as we think people run out of ideas of vehicles to customize and modify, here comes a guy with a giant off-road golf cart. Which we've seen off-road golf carts before. Look at the seats on that thing. That looks like a place you want to kick back and relax for a while and get a sky view down here, a golfing adventure, no doubt. I think that guy who saw too many Grinch movies personally. Oh, how are you doing? How are you doing? Sorry about that. All right. All right. And then this guy. How the hell did you get in the middle of a bunch of trucks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you want to show off. Give it up for our poor poster. Looking good, guys. As our trucks come home through, Joe's looking up there. We got some hot rods coming through. Oh, they're coming, kid. What's this, a little low rim? What do we got here? See? Love it. There you go. And you don't have to worry about the other 20 cars around you being the same. Right? Give it up for our Jeep fans. We got some Jeeps coming through in red, white, and blue. All right, Kevin, I'm jealous of this Corvette guy. He's got a really nice car, it looks like some movie star. And before we get to that, Joe, I need to take a look at this Riviera that's rolling down here. Bring this thing over here for a sec, pal. I knew you were going to love that one. Yeah, you knew it, you knew it. Sure. Mark that thing right over here. So, friends, what we're looking at here is a 1965 Buick Riviera. But this is not a stock 65 year ago. You'll notice it's sitting on the ground. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about the car. Uh, 65 Riviera on a Roadster Shop chassis. It's got a thousand horse LS, uh, Bosch ABS. So he says that casually. Oh, you know, it's got a road set. It's got a thousand horsepower, friends. And listen to this thing. You, you can't even hear it. Thousand horsepower because of a supercharged LS9 engine. Tell us who you are and what you had to do with it. I'm Matt from Sled Alley Hot Rods. And, uh, Matt, you did an awesome job on this car. Thanks for bringing it out. It belongs to our good friend Charlie. I'm envious. I want to drive that thing. This car has already been driven over 3,000 miles across the country on the Good Guys uh, Legends Tour. 
Love to see the ones that get driven. Love to see the oddball cars that don't get the love. Cool to see the rim. All right, Kevin, next thing you're going to try to buy the car. Let the Riviera go. We got a cruise. We got no setting up future purchases, Kevin. You know me, Joe. I couldn't afford six years of that car. All right, so a lot of our sponsors like to give items out, like hats and T-shirts. But they're just not that smart. It's like a 30-foot toss to get to you. So if you do have some items, I'll grab them. We'll make sure that everybody gets a little love. What we're worried about is somebody coming into the track. So sponsors, if you have some items that you like to give away, just be mindful of the fact that it's, it's kind of tough when you throw a t-shirt, but it's on the other side of the road when there's moving traffic, right? Right now, we've got to keep it safe, and especially like we said, we throw the stuff up in the stands. Uh, no need to uh, get hurt diving too far. We appreciate the, uh, the effort and the enthusiasm. Uh, I see a 32 Ford uh, little roaster sitting here. Sir, your name? My name's Paul Underwags. Paul, tell me, what color is this? This is a 1932 Ford Roadster. What color? That's a crystal blue metallic. Crystal blue metallic. I love it. We still got the hairpin front end, the big wheels. You got some Halibrand esque style wheels. What's under the hood? It has an Edelbrock 415 horsepower crate engine. Awesome, buddy. Thanks for bringing it up. Go for it. We can't hold up the cruise. Pass it. We'll stay here and talk to everybody. That guy sounded like a damn pro. That's that Corvette telling me what he thinks of that roadster. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, we're going to keep it rolling. Another Optima car coming through and a, a beautiful Ford Torino. This one uh, built by our buddy Randy at DZ Custom. It's a 69 Mercury Cyclone we built for Optima Jim. He's 7 foot 1, I'm 5'10. We're close. <laughs> Yeah, so Randy behind the wheel is 5'10". The guy that owns this car is 7 feet 1 inches tall. So if he looks like he's lost in there, he really is. But an awesome, awesome car. Mercury Cyclone. I call it a Torino, but it's actually a Cyclone. One of those things you don't see every day. Kev, I have a little trivia about Optima Jim. Did you know that Optima Jim played in the NBA? At 7 foot 1? Are you kidding me? I'd never believe that. So I slam dunked on him during feature vehicle movement? That I believe. All right. Joe, you slam dunked on everybody at some point. Well, they keep on coming, Ken. Every once in a while, some guy is a first time exhibitor gets stuck in this traffic. So I can't wait for the first Hertz rental car to come through. <laughs> well, you know, they're all special in their own way. This one's not. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking the big Freightliner, though. Hey. How's it going, buddy? He's uh, one of the taller vehicles for us here today. Our drone had to elevate a little bit to, uh, to clear the roof on that one. Kev, I'm here with the man, the legend, Rob Wilson. Rob, how's the SEMA show for you, man? Oh, man, just another great SEMA. You guys have been putting on a few now, SEMA United, and then again home. I look forward to seeing you back on the West Coast. Rob's been a great friend of the industry forever. Oh, twice, I gotta see this guy again. I've seen enough of you last night. You got all, oh. Officer, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joe, you're getting pulled over, you're not even in a car. Again, Kev, he's with the drag program. Let's walk and talk. This is the, I saw this when you guys checked in. What a worthwhile program you got going on. Give us a little nuts and birds with the program. Well, I got my own bike. <laughs> Can you fix a ticket for me? <laughs> the drag car, drag racing against gangs and graffiti. Very cool to see. Got some modern little trucks, about a 29.4 coming through. Good to see it. I believe that was parked out in front of the custom auto sound display this year. Corvette posers, always taking their time. How many Corvettes do you have, Joe? Pull it over, keep it coming. Hello, Mike. What do we have here, Mike? Hey, I'm 
We gotta keep this rolling along. How's everything going? How's it been since you won the award? Everything's going good. We're just so honored to be here and be back here and bring what we got and support and see all the people we love. All right, Ken Miller, the yeah, former yeah. award winner of the C. Michelle. You can find out more as they make their way to. Dan, I love the body truck. It looks great. And look at the fit and finish on that truck. A lot of these square bodies, you know, they, they lived a hard life. They're work trucks. That thing's incredible. And right behind it, we've got the off road SRT. John, I see the Porsche. It's a little more your style coming through here. Kevin, I like the name. I go to the church and all the time. I'm going to do my Porsche things. You'd like to think so. What do we got here, bud? How you doing? Introduce yourself. What's your name? Mike Ernster. Mike, tell us a little bit about the vehicle. It's a 1957 Volvo military vehicle made for the Swedish military. What's underneath the head? 572 Big Block. I've never heard of one. That thing is super cool. Could you imagine, uh, I'm just imagining the, the Swedish chef from the Muppets building engines. <laughs> and they're bringing their own Kevin. I'd like to bring that home and tell my wife, honey, we got a new lease. Very cool. Joe, you mentioned road cars before. We've got a Shelby GTH. Hertz uh, modern version of the GT 350H rental car uh, coming down the pike. That's one that I would not mind renting. That program did not last long, if I recall, Kevin. Well, the first one uh, is kind of funny. Uh, Hertz contracted for 1,000 vehicles, including uh, a test car. So it was actually 1,001 or 1,002 that were made. Uh, the last two, the black and gold cars, nobody wanted to buy them. So they ended up sitting in, in a dealer lot forever and ever and ever. And today they're, they're coveted like you wouldn't believe. Hey, I'm here with uh, Matt Hunt with a really clean Bronco. I'm a big fan of Broncos. You did it right. How was the show for you, Matt? It was awesome. I'd like to thank Raceline, King Suspension, uh, everybody at Ford. It was it's been a great show. show. How's this guy Michael Blutter to work with? Michael Blood was awesome. Hey, if you guys aren't doing it, Young Guns, any builders, you got to get around with the builders. Thank you very much. There's a testament to the program as well. Nice vehicle, looking really, really good. Those Broncos are hard to find and they look good. You did a sweet job on that. Congratulations, brother. Yeah, and as you guys down here towards the other end, you're going to see in a minute this Bronco coming up. Uh, as you probably know, Broncos are on fire right now. They are so, so popular because they're so much fun. And, and they don't call them Broncos for nothing. That short wheelbase, if you've ever driven one, you put some power and some big tires on those things, you know, it, it's like being on a mechanical bull that you can drive down the road. But they are a lot of fun. What do you know about mechanical bulls? I've seen you fly off a couple of them. That's all I know. Twenty-seven dollars, then. Twenty-seven, and you collected all of two or three. I love it, kid, because when you first come out, it's hot. You know, it screws up my hair, sweat. Now it's cool. It's zero cruise into the night. Phew. I can't wait. Now, Kevin, the Cena show has officially been over for 20 minutes. And even so, this is nothing. Hey, Joe, you know, the, the SEMA show might have been over for 20 minutes, but the party is just getting started because there are a lot of vehicles that are coming right here and right now through the SEMA cruise. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out again and sharing this tremendous spectacle with us because there's no other event like the SEMA cruise. Uh, where you can see these cars of this caliber and be this close and enjoy them. And we thank you for sharing this time with us. Let me get Mikey over here. Mikey, you look like a beaming father with all these vehicles coming in. It's got to give you a good sense of satisfaction. And you've been working on this for a year. There's a lot of phone calls. People love their spot. They don't love their spot. They've been waiting in line. It all comes to a head now. How are you feeling now? Uh, is it 10 o'clock, Angel? Is it 10 o'clock? It's 10 o'clock somewhere. That's Mikey's way of saying that he knows he's at the end. And I want to thank you again for all your work. Really good job. Mike Robledo, head of our Young Guns program. There's a Dodge you don't see anywhere. A little power wagon action. 
the mini cab. Yeah, that thing is serious. And these Dodge trucks, for a long time, didn't get love from customizers and builders. Probably because the guys on this troop, a lot of them rusted away on farms, and a lot of them are still working. But this one, this thing's over the top. Great work. Thanks for bringing this thing out. Beautiful work. The, the, uh, the fantasy mega cab. Giant. A little monster speed coming your way here. Yeah, the road Javelin at the show. I think there may have been three javelins. Did you see them? 
I saw at least one. Javelins are cool. I saw one guy get really mad. He had a really nice Nova, and a guy said, hey, nice duster. Yeah, that'll oh, do it. Oh, that. they hate that. That'll do it. Oh, they hate that. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at the faded paint job on this 69 Chevelle that's rolling by. That is, uh, goes from kind of a, a, a lighter cranberry down to almost black. It's, it's, it's not an illusion. That is a, a faded paint job. It looks dynamite. Kev, I'm seeing a ghost. It's Mask from UFC. He's relived. He's back. Stranger things have happened here at the SEMA Cruise. We have another contender in the Train Horn Nationals, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause for our friend of the big Hot F-250. We didn't know. stuff coming up. This uh, Corvette here has this mystical color of, of metallic satin green. What color is it? color I'd never put on my car. It's chrome turquoise. Satin chrome turquoise Corvette, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. That, I know, is not one of the colors that Chevrolet offers. That is a full custom deal. And you're right, that truck is killer. Kev? Kev? Yeah? We got a bleeder. Uh-oh. What do we got, Joe? He put his steering wheel on the wrong side. Oh, man, again? Hey, I'm Australian, so I tell you. You know what's fun about that? It makes it easier for me to talk to the driver. So uh, I appreciate him building this custom vehicle uh, for me here. So this is interesting because uh, this is a, a Holden Ute of some sort. That's correct. It's a 2010 Holden Commodore SSU. The cool thing about these is here in the United States, we saw this platform being used with the GA, uh, the Chevy uh, Caprice police car version, but you've had these down there for quite a while. Yeah, it's several, it runs as, as what you would have here in, in the PPVs or by Chevy SS. So I'm gathering that you're not from here. Definitely not. I'm from down under. So did you bring this vehicle and yourself just for the SEMA show or are you uh, here in Vegas you know, throwing some dice and a car show broke out? I'm not much of a gambler but we did bring it all the way from Australia. We left six weeks ago and uh, it did uh, 4,000 kilometers on the road and 15,000 kilometers on the water before it made it all the way down here. Unbelievable. Your name? Stuart. Stuart, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Stuart and his Holden Ute LS powered all the way from Australia just to come see you folks here today. That's the whole reason why he came, is to be part of the SEMA show and this event, and we really appreciate that. Well, he's no Steve Irwin. You got a, a table at Outback waiting for you. Come on, let's go. Don't make any blooming onion jokes, Joe. Right. He had two cylinders in that car, Kevin. He's got guys with 20 cylinder cars we could be talking to. He put his steering wheel on the wrong side. Look at this, selfies. Joe, we've got a killer green custom bubble top and pallet coming your way. Yes. Uh, got a fast sticker in the window that me uh, get some fuel injected motor. What do you got in this? LS3. It sounds great. It sounds a little high strung, like it wants to go. Oh, she wants to run. About 700 horse. 700 horsepower. Thanks for bringing it out. That's a, another great color. I dig the two tone with the painted trim. Following that is another square body Chevy GMC pickup truck. This has the paint scheme from the Indy 500. Tell me about it. And uh, was this a special edition truck? I mean, how many of these things did they make? We're just going to walk it up. They made 27 of them in 1975. Three of them were long bed. This one is super truck. Yeah, I can hear it under there. It's under the hood. I love it. Thanks for bringing it out, man. Hey, Kevin, another vehicle that I ultimately screwed up on. It's a square body pickup truck. Guess what model I got? What'd you get, Joe? The long bed. Yeah. Guess what color mine was? Brown. 
peach. Oh, even better. Hi. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the queen has arrived. Head up there and talk with Doug as well. Well, come on up here, Miss Swamp Woman USA. Over there, Joe's going to talk. Now, I saw you guys when uh, you were checking in. Come over here a little bit. Uh oh, I I know it. Well, that's what happens. Fire it up. Oh, you got to dig it. He's got the microphone as a shifter. Looking good. Don't talk into it. So how the hell did you get talked into this? What's your name? I'm the budget. He's the builder. He's the builder. This guy crazy. How do you? What did he do? How much time did he spend building this vehicle? A lot of time. A lot of your money? Yes. But was it worth it? Did you have a good time? Yes, I did. It was very much worth it. Hey, uh, come on, walk through us a little bit. I didn't know we had a, a queen of SEMA here this year. Kenny did a pretty good job on this thing. When you take a look at it, he wasn't fooling her up. What other vehicles do you have in the stable? And this one? No, what other vehicles do you have besides this? A 27 Roadster and a 29 Ford truck. Now, where are you from? Louisiana. Louisiana. Well, thank you for coming out. And you know what? That looks like it's from Louisiana. You did a really good job representing your state. Thank you for coming out, brother. That's going to be a nice long. round of applause from our friends from Louisiana. It's going to be a long drive back in that one. Well, the back of it's full with Crown Royal, Kim. Oh, well, then it'll be a fun drive back. Shut up, put the round in there. Let's make sure it's a safe drive back. We've got more variety coming your way, Joe. We've got a couple of more big trucks. We've got uh, a highly supercharged fastback Mustang coming up. This thing's got that alcohol burning idle to it where it kind of revs itself up and pushes itself along because it wants to be on a drag strip, essentially. Just like that. Yeah, this looks like a crocodile getting ready to kill something. Yeah, and coming up. We've got an awesome Jeep. I'm going to see a uh, short bed honcho pickup. Tell me about it. 82 J10. Son, show the project, and we brought it out to show it to you. Taylor's here. Now, these things are also starting to get real popular. We appreciate you bringing it out. You did a great job with it. Hey, Kim, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors for the SEMA Cruise. Obviously, we couldn't do it without the help from our friends at Rolling Big Power, Mother's Waxes and Polishes. The Shell Oil Company, Anzo Performance Lighting. Friends from Hot Wheels are celebrating their 50th anniversary. Thank God all this stuff's on the wall. Remember it, and our friends from Kia, the SEMA Brews. How about a nice round of applause for all of our sponsors, everybody? Thank you. Yeah, thanks our sponsors. I just realized all the logos are right there on the wall. Jim, did you see that? I did. That's what I'm talking about, a Cobra Jet Mustang in full drag race trim. See that Rice and Holman name on there. Vintage speed stickers, the Craig R wheels, the Jardine exhaust. Seems not just about new parts, they've got some old parts as well. And if you want to see a crazy Mustang, this one coming up next. This thing has been modified every way possible, uh, and uh, I'm going to let him tell you what's under the hood because you're not going to believe me. Tell me about the engine. It's a Ferrari F430. Did you hear that? It's a Ferrari-powered Mustang, ladies and gentlemen. Listen. That is fantastic. I'm not going to ask how you end up with just the 430 engine. You know, if you maybe roll the Ferrari, uh, even the Ferraris that get rolled get fixed. So that's another mystery right there. But that that's a cool car. Hey, Kev, get this guy. Put a helmet on him. But before you do, watch out. We're, we're going to chat with you for a sec. Yeah, that guy's got like six nitrous express bottles. Be careful over there. Yeah, th this is crazy. Let's hear it for the diesel powered. Oh. Get a snort of that, Kev. Get yeah, so what did this thing start off as? What's that? What did this start off as? This started off as a bunch of 
Bored men playing with diesels in Montana. Ah, Big Sky Country. And you're trying to turn that whole Big Sky black with diesel smoke. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a not good product of it, but that's what happens when you make power. Right on, man. Well, thanks for bringing it up. I think it's insane. I ain't mad with that, Kev. He's okay. He can pour out the diesel. Followed by a Grand Wagoneer that looks like it rolled off the showroom floor. What's going on with this thing? He says it's completely restored. You did a phenomenal job on this thing. Thank you so much for bringing it out. Kev, somebody's lost. Who's that? Ah, uh, you'll know. He's coming through. <laughs> we got lost. Somebody hey, it's home of the world's fastest sidecars. They go through the levy racing. <laughs> You're still lost. Keep going. Gentlemen, this is blasphemy. This is Mike Finnegan's 55 Chevy. You know Mike from Roadkill. That one was on display here this week at SEMA. Hey, did you see F Bomb? That was on display at the Holly Booth Twin Turbo Monster Freiburger Creation. <laughs> You're gonna love this next one, Kev. Coming your way. I love them all, Joe. Original patina, little Buick action. A very fine 59. These guys are saying, yeah, they told me to go back there where I could load my car in my trailer and go home. And look what happened here, right, in the SEMA cruise. Ask him who told him that, Kev. Uh, it certainly wasn't Joe. Oh. It got to be some point. I would just tell anybody, just go up there and make it right. It was Joe. <laughs> just make it right. Just go up to the light and make it right. Well, here's the deal, you know, many people have come a long, long distance in unassuming looking pickup trucks and whited out trailers. And the fun thing is, you never know what's inside that trailer until it gets unloaded here at the SEMA show. I know what's inside every one of those trailers. You do, Joe, because you help unload all those cars and get them in the show. And you're right, this 59 Buick Invicta, I love it. I knew it would. I knew you would, Kev. It's got a great stance, great wheels. Let me ask a quick question. You gotta keep moving though, keep driving. So does this thing still have a nail head under the hood or did you change it up? So 364, 401? 401 original nail head Buick V8 under the hood of this thing. Definitely, definitely not the original suspension unless he's got like 27 kegs of beer. But that would fit back there to bring that thing down that low. Joe, you had me nervous for a second there. I see the, uh, the Weston pickup truck with all the lights on. I thought you were getting us in trouble once again. No, I talked my way out of that. I'm good. I'm actually making my way. It's about 3,000 people lined up on the, what would it be, the north side of the sound hall. I, not only can I see the end of the line of the people, I can't see the end of the line of the cars. So hopefully we're getting overtime. Are we getting big overtime? Uh. So, look at these cars, Joe. I know your wife's your agent, so I'm sure you're getting paid. My guy, my guy's a stiff. I'm probably, I'm probably gonna lose money on this deal. Here they come, another pusher. Oh, see, yeah. Oh, he's got a cool paint job. Let me get over here and find out how this is. Joe, you raised a good point, not being able to see the end of the line here. Okay, uh, Casey, hey, so I'm here with my man. This is Casey's, <laughs> Casey Scrap with CGS, okay, one of the, Probably one of the hottest up and coming vehicle builders, works with all the OEs, gets all these cars, works on them, makes them gorgeous, and the idiot runs out of gas. <laughs> What's happening, Casey? How nice, Joe. They tell us uh, that we can only have a little bit of gas, but we need more gas to get out the, the show. <laughs> You're full of gas, Casey. All right, he still let's, does a good job. That's a nice Mustang. Let's give it up for the one guy pushing. We feel your pain, brother. Keep it going, my there friend. You go. Kev, if you want to help him, man, I'm, I'm going to get my hand because my microphone runs out range back here and they can't hear me, but they probably don't really care that they can't hear me. So take it away, Joe. Oh, no, I'm done. I'm... All right, Kev, I'm going to make my way up here. This is like, again, this continues to be really the calm before the storm. This ain't nothing. This ain't nothing, buddy. We cannot see the end of the line of cars, so I hope we're comfortable. Well, Kev, you were a Bronco fan. I think you had another one making its way towards you. Yeah, I bet he's from the south. Call me crazy. Yahoo! Yeah, all right, then. Next. No, it's all good, but everybody having a good time? Woo! Everybody gonna roll over to the uh, Platinum Lot for the big C-Mignited. 
get to hang out with all the battle of the builders. Once again, a big welcome to thank you to all of our media. Let's find out where some of these guys could be imposters, Kevin. Anybody can buy one of these cheap vests at Kmart. Yeah, and we didn't even think about it. You know you can get the credentials maybe on Craigslist. Like, Phil, are you really a photographer? Yes, I am. Where are you from? Minnesota. Minnesota? How's the car culture out there? I used to like going to all those car shows in, uh, where was it? Uh, Minnesota State Fairgrounds? Back to the 50s, everyone. Back to the 50s, great event. So you're legit, you're gonna stay put. This guy, Brian. Brian, where are you from? Seattle. What, what media are you representing? Garage Asylum. I see that. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's a social media platform, a lot of racing and cool shows like SEMA. Pretty nice to come to the SEMA show and get a couple of weeks, days, or months of fodder, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, you have a good time. Thank you, our media. How about you, young man? Wait a minute, you could be older than me. What's your name? Dan. Where are you from, Dan? Bay Area. Bay Area. What, what media are you representing? Uh, import Image. Import Image. Seeing a lot of nice imports? Definitely. Definitely. Did you know that Peter McGillenray, our head guy here at SEMA, actually was a part of the crew that started Super Street Magazine? Oh, there you go. Yes, he did. Uh, he did a lot, right? Yeah. Hey, listen, I made it back. I helped them push the Mustang all the way to the end over there. I see. But yeah. the, that keeps getting heavier the longer it goes, I'll tell you right now. You're a good person, Kevin, and people like you. I've just been there, my friend. You know, on the Hot Rod Power Tour one year, I helped a guy push a Nova up Vegas Boulevard the whole way. Oh, you're not that smart, Kev. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and he had plenty of gas, he just didn't start. You're a giver. And you're either a giver or you're not a giver. That's right. Excellent, Excellent job, job of wrapping this American Force graphic Ford pickup truck. Carrying some more personal craft on the back of a super slick black 69 Camaro. Rolling on Ford's line. Kevin, I'm spotting a lease vehicle. I'm spotting a lease vehicle. Warning. Warning. You know, they wondered about the change in menu. If the, how it was going to affect things. I think this is our biggest crowd ever. Thanks everybody for coming. You're a big part of the SEMA crew. We love having everybody out here. All right, here it comes, kid. Yep. What do you think, guys? Please? Please? All right. Just saying. Check his watch. Check his watch and his shoes. I guarantee it's least. Least? <laughs> Didn't you have one of those? You had something similar. Certainly did. Thank you. Not many people know that I was a professional baseball player. At that time, I was making a lot of money, and I wasted it all on expensive cars. That's what you do, buddy. Beautiful Corvette Roadster. And the flat nose cab over rolling through. Ken, don't get online with these two guys. I mean, just be nice. Wave them on. Don't look directly in their eyes. It's not going to shoot. No, nothing. All good. I think it's another one. But there's nothing wrong with that. Joe, is it true that uh, before you started your illustrious career in the automotive media world with Peterson Publishing, you were discovered working uh, as a doorman at a hotel in New York? Is that true? Thank you, pardon? No, true. true. Bellman, not a doorman. Ah, excellent. I was actually a luggage technician. <laughs> like a man of the people, our friend Joe, ladies and gentlemen. I was fun. All the big shots. I worked in a little place called the Daytona Hill in Daytona, and uh, didn't realize that I was in the middle. Hey, I'm in the middle of the story over here. Anyways, I would be in Daytona, and they would have the Daytona 500, all the motorcycle events, and the firecracker events, and all the big shots stayed at our hotel. And my job was to find all the rental cars that they left on the beach when they got drunk. My job was to help them get in and out of the track. And one of them, one of the clients was dumb enough to hire me as a bellman from the Hilton. And I went to work at Hot Rod Magazine. And the rest they say, Kevin, is all downhill. Sure was, man. One of my favorite cars of all time is coming up. A lot of people make fun of the Edsel, but not my buddy Bobby Alloway. This is a 58 Edsel, 
and it is super, super slick. It's got an awesome fuel-injected late-model Ford engine and, of course, a manual transmission, and it's driven by our friend Rick Love from Vintage Air. We're going we're gonna to bother Rick. So, you've all heard of Vintage Air, the uh, company that makes the air conditioning systems for hot rods, muscle cars. How did you get a chance to drive Bobby's uh, Edsel? Well, I was the cheapest driver he could find. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody he obviously trusts. There, I guess there's that too. So does this thing drive as nice as it looks? It really does. It's got an arm horse and frame, and we got the air and all of that. I mean, it drives like a new car, it really does. Engine, Coyote engine, and Tremec five speed, so I mean, it really, it's like driving a new car. Maybe it's got vintage air? You bet. So, I tell you what, if Edsel's rolled out of the factory looking like this, they'd still be in business today. What, that, isn't that the truth? That sure is. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. Thanks for bringing it out. And we've got a message for all of our friends on foot traffic over here that are walking uh, close to the South Hall. Uh, if you continue around, there is an opportunity to walk around that other set of bleachers, and there's a mid-gate where you can get out over there. I was told by, uh, by the show management. So we've got people kind of stacking up. If you're looking to get out, there is a way out to go around the back. Hey, Kev. Yes, sir. Do we get paid extra if we really enunciate these PA spots? Enunciate them properly, or what do you mean? Well, I wonder if I really boost up this spot, if I can get everything like a League of Launching. Go for it, give it a shot. Hey, any League of Launching fans? Yeah, I mean, I like League of because, when it's sad way to do right? As far as what the car sell for, you mean? Yeah, um, you know, League of is kind of like the average size auction. What do you say? Uh, I love what they do. I kind of feel comfortable with the prices, I like the cars. I like what they do. I like the big chubby guy. I think what's super fun about going to a vegan auction is even if you're not there by yourself, it's an awesome, awesome car show. Just be careful. You might get the bug. Pretty soon you'll be bitten. Well, I can't go there anymore. Thank you. Because I went once and had a big problem. But I would suggest everybody check out vegan. It's the world's largest collection of car auction company with over 18 auctions this year. You can check out their schedule for upcoming auctions near you. Get the full Meekum experience at Meekum.com. Once again, Meekum, the world's largest collector car auction company. You can check out their complete schedule for upcoming events and auctions near you. You get the full Meekum experience at Meekum.com. How the hell was that? That was great. You know, I'll add a little bit to that. If you go to the Meekum.com website, you can join what's called the Meekum Info Night the InfoNet, it's a free service. And if you go and join the InfoNet, you can go back in time and look at all the previous auctions and see what the cars sold for. They show the price. If you don't register, they don't show you the price. So yeah, I think I'm dreaming. I'm on a beach. I've got a Corvette. I've got a girl on the side. i got one on the top. i got a, I got more gas than Casey did. And then I wake up, Kevin, I hate it. You're not dreaming, you're at the SEMA cruise, buddy. I am. How are you? Are you dreaming about being on the beach in a truck with a girl on top? Yes. There you go, man. And a few other things. All right, we got, we got some hat launchers. These are the ones that cause the problems, Kevin. I say, look, start throwing out product. Then some guys start throwing out shocks. You lost the people. So it got ugly quick. Oh boy. You know, so you gotta watch it. All right, Kev, we have what we can describe moderately. We'll just call this a support vehicle. How you guys doing? 6.3 cam. What a great job. Damn. Let's let that thing rev up. Holy so he didn't just show up with one luxury Mercedes wagon. He showed up with a dozen of them. When out of a dozen, they do it right. All kidding aside, Kim, thank you so much for what you guys did. Have a great upcoming event. It's the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Educational. They do a great job. I love having those guys around. They gave out batteries to all of our citizens, and they did not fool around. Optima batteries. Thank you so much, Kim, for all you do. All right. Oh, yeah. This is looking nice. And, Kev, yeah. This is available in the new Sears catalog. It is. It certainly is. The, uh, the, the Tron uh, cycle is available in the new Sears catalog. It's great to know. 
See? Here comes a Ford Talladega. This is an extended nose version of the Torino, and this was done to increase the aerodynamics on the super speedways of NASCAR racing in 1969-1970. The fun thing is that the hot NASCAR engine was the, uh, the Boss 429 engine, and Ford made a car called the Boss 429 Mustang, but that Mustang never raced the NASCAR, but they used that car to make that engine legal to run in cars like this Torino Talladega right here, and that one is awesome. Look at the size of the tires on the back of that thing. And another go kept, that's a Ricky Bobby's favorite car as well. That sure is. You haven't seen a black paint job recently that looks like this one on this radically altered Dodge Charger coming through with the red wheels. And the fun thing about SEMA, it's backed up by what appears to be a perfectly looking stock Shelby GT350 right behind it. Another one of the great looking trucks here on display at SEMA. We've got another big ram. I got a quick question. You've got some beautiful airbrush graphics on the side. We've got a wolf, we've got a skull, we've got some women, we've got a woman with a skull. Are these any people you know or are these random people? Well, it's not my truck, it's his truck, so I'll have to ask him. We'll ask him, I can't reach him. Uh, I didn't know if it was, you know, special people in your life immortalized in airbrush graphics. Beautiful truck. Ken, I have a new favorite. Oh, yeah? I've got a new favorite. What do you got? You'll see it, believe me. Coming your way, baby. The Jeep with the red, silver, and gray digital street camo? Not so much that one. I think it's cool. Oh, you oh, must cool. be talking about the Charger. The Charger, yes I am, Kev. Deep down, I'm a Mopar guy. Damn it, I'm gonna just say it. The Minecraft Jeep, that's it. How you doing? So nice bring, this, bring this one over here. Nice Let's take a look at this green charger. This is a heck of a car. Uh, almost uh, one of the stock Mopar colors for the year. I'll talk to you on the other side. Hold on a sec, friends. We're taking a look at this Dodge Charger, and although this looks like a radical green, this almost appears to be one of the original colors. Yeah, this is definitely not. It's a custom uh, in-house mix. It's actually a base coat, clear coat, so even though it appears candy, it is definitely not a candy. You can touch it up, but it'll candy as you drive. The paint's amazing. It sure is. The whole car's amazing. I'm seeing a whole late model dash, and I'm guessing there's a, a late model driveline. Oh, yeah. Full Hellcat, everything. Hellcat, down to the T's. Well, if you want to got a Hellcat out of the factory, every option, everything. Motor's beefed up, about 825 horsepower. Runs and drives like a new Hellcat. Looks like a 69 Charger. Did a heck of a job, man. Congratulations. Thanks for bringing it out. Ken, I'm going to take you back to the future pretty soon. I can see why you like that one, Joe. It's all coming back to me now, Kev. Dig the big LED sequential taillights on that one, too. When the taillights are that long on a car, you get mesmerized following them. But you won't follow him for long because he's going to be out of here quickly with 800 horsepower. So, Kev, I'm digging the old body styles with the new wave drivetrain. I'm talking about the A body dusters with new heavy stuff inside of them. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about that Charger probably sitting on front of brand new Chrysler platform. Yeah, it's all Hellcat. Dash is all contemporary of the day. Yep. All the creature comforts, but it's still got that badass look from back in the day. The best of all worlds, my friend. There he is, Kevin. Back to the future. Yeah, we've got to be careful. There he is. I don't think Brillo, I don't think anybody has ever achieved 88 miles an hour in the SEMA cruise, but if this guy does, look out, because he's going out of time. Big round of applause for the DeLorean DMC-12 was the model number. Stainless car, the DMC-12, kind of an interesting name for a car. It stands for DeLorean Motor Company, and the 12 was representative of $12,000, which is what they thought this was going to cost when it was new. 
Unfortunately, John DeLorean and his friends missed the mark quite a bit. They sold for about 23, 25 grand instead of 12. But it's nice to have a, a goal. And this guy's got his gull wing doors open, and they're just cool cruising in that DeLorean. Mixing it up with an old style, got the Screaming Eagle on there. Well, well yeah, you know, and he's got a, it sounds like with the 6.2 badge on that scoop, I'm guessing a form of an LS engine. Uh, these cars, they drove really nice, they handled very well when they were new, but of course now there are so many awesome suspension components to what I call, feel like you take the weight out of the car, because that second gen Firebird, it's kind of a heavy ride, but with the right things and suspension, it, uh, it'll ride. Kev, 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 the guy with the stickers on the car. It's not a 6.2 of oh, the oh, oh, he's with a 7 on it. Yeah. yeah. All right, big truck time. Joe, bit. Joe, your buddy with the Mazda had a little issue. Yeah, why am I not surprised? <laughs> right? I swear. Tell him I'm going to give him a Pioneer head unit, though. Just keep things cool. Usually, Ken, by, by now someone's come up and said something like, good job, or you're, you're doing good. Isn't Joe doing a great job, ladies and gentlemen? Big round of applause for Joe's fishing for some compliments. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, I'm sharing all that with you, Ken, because oh, you're actually you, the new guy. Hey, hey, you know what? Everybody, let's have a round of applause for everybody that came out here today that's enjoying this tremendous event. What do you think? It's the SEMA Cruise 2018. Let's have some noise. All right, everybody, have some noise. Yeah. That's it, keep doing it. <laughs> we have a saying in our shop, it's called, This is how we do <laughs> This is how we learn. She had the Mexican last night. <laughs> right on, man. So our friend here on the uh, Yamaha motorcycle is on its way home from what? Welcome to the uh, SEMA Parade. All right, Kev. I know patina is cool. Everybody loves it. I'm patina is cool. Before, when you get a vehicle with patina, they would sand it off, put on some glossy red. Yeah. Now, Kev, they're putting the patina on, too. I think this is a mix. It looks really good. Did a really nice job. Cool GMC. There's a, uh, a technical term for that, Joe. It's called faux patina. There you go. Kind of like that outfit I had on. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. But I, was, I was bringing back my inner Liberace. You know, I was in Vegas. I wanted to do the fur thing. 
But you know what's cool? It's an early GMC Suburban. It's not something you see every day. And uh, the, the shiny patina does look a little bit interesting, but you know, you clear it to protect it. Ford, I know, uh, a little Ford GT action. Yep. You may want to tell her that her head's sticking out of the door if you see her, Kev. We've got an awesome F100. How you doing, brother? Great looking truck. Come out here. This is done by our friends at Classic Car Studio, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen the show Speed is in Black. Keep your eye on the show for that one. Just watch that. Followed by the Ford GT. I thought you were talking about the, the new orange, just the new black. That's a scary one. Watch. There's, a, there's our friend John Wargo from the Custom Shop bringing his multi colored. Kev, uh, representing right. Poland. I think they got this mixed up. Ah, uh, you never know, man. Don't you uh, have the truck tow the... Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. He's demonstrating the pulling ability of that side. Oh, yeah. Hey, come on over here. The Hoonigan guys, what's happening? Everybody's talking about you guys. How was the show for you? It was great. I really want to thank everybody for coming out and seeing us act like fools. We can't wait to do it again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, BFG, Raceline King, and thank you, SEMA. Hey, tell us about the Hoonigan truck. Ah, this is our Slam Together Baja bug that in a week we will be going down and competing in the Baja. So come watch us make this thing fall apart. All right, man, one of the coolest finds out here. Yeah, I'm winning in the Look it up, guys. Careful. Hey, any Vegas Rat Rod fans out there? Come on over here. Get out of the way, Kim. I got this one. Hey, buddy, it's all you. I'm a parlay. This is just a, a role on a TV show. You Come on over here, Steve. First of all, I hate this guy. You know why? He's on TV. And he's good looking. He's got muscles. Come on over, Steve. Come over. Uh, let me come over and check him out. What the hell is this? You never know what he's building. All right, turn it off, Steve. How about the star of Vegas Rat Rods, Steve Darnell? How about a nice round of applause? Hey, hey Steve. <laughs> Welcome aboard, buddy. So I, I was watching you work the room, but before we get into what's going on, tell us a little bit about this build. Uh, this is a 47 Federal with a twin turbo 12 Alp Cummins. Who wants to see my welder roll coal? Yeah. Hey, you want to see the welder roll coal? Before we roll call, let's let the uh, the Riddler winning Foos and Pala imposter go by, because that's a heck of a car. Sometimes timing's out of control, but yes, folks, how about take a look at that awesome vehicle? Nice car. Yeah, wonderful. wonderful. Says it's nice. <laughs> wonderful contrast. All right, so back to you, Steve. Go ahead. Sure. All right, let's fire up this welder, huh? See if we can get some coal rolled out of it. If it'll fire. All right, everybody, hold on to your seats. What well, folks I'm may not, not sure realize that happen. Steve and his dad welded up most of this whole town. Literally. It goes back for decades. Has welder, will travel. Hey, tell us a little bit about the TV show, Steve. Uh, we're on uh, Tuesday nights on Discovery Channel. Um, we're in the middle of our season right now, so be watching. Hey, you've been with us now for going on one, two, three, four SEMA shows. You're always there to help us out. I know you're good friends with my main man, Rich and Ningas. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Not only do I love this guy, but his show is real. And they do a really good job. Congratulations on all your success. Thank you, guys. Thanks, SEMA. Thanks for the fans. We love you guys. Right on. All right. Hey, big more from uh, Vegas Rat Rods and Steve Darnell tonight. Right across the street at the Platinum lot. Kevin, you think I'm going to get a job now? Uh, you're doing great, Joe. Uh, the audition, back over the here. audition continues. All right. And we just missed that awesome Chip Foos vehicle. Again, you'll see that vehicle up close and personal right at CB Ignited. So you didn't miss anything. Just another example of the incredible diversity of cars on display at SEMA. You know, that, that Foos Impala has had absolutely everything done to it. But then again, so has the rat truck. So. It's all what you're into, my friends. Kev, I don't know if it's still high from last night, but I think I'm seeing the same truck come back. It's a guy with the gold undercoated. Yeah, it's him. Or it's his brother. One of the two. How are you? You make me feel like I should behave. Christ. She was cute, wasn't she? You remind me of my neighbor. She was a nut. 
Yeah, she probably didn't like you either. Joe, is it true that there uh, is no way we can see the end of the cars at this point? Well, it's true, literally. Uh, let's see, Kent. No, no, we got a long time before that happens, brother. Love to hear it, man. We are here for the long haul, my friends. We have lots and lots and lots of cool cars coming. No idea when this is gonna end, so uh, if you're standing here in the crowd on either side, get to know your neighbor, introduce yourself. Say, hi, I'm Frank, I'm Dave, I'm Tina. Welcome to Seymour. Enjoy the cruise. You might make some lifelong friends right here in the stands. You never even thought of that, did you? No, if your contract says you've done it seven, you can leave it seven. Nah, <laughs> just kidding. I can't uh, right. get enough of this. How you doing, man? What's this contract you talk about? Oh, you didn't get one? Uh, we'll have to talk later. Oh. Super Duty F3. Well, well, well. Not quite, not quite gold, but not quite brown. Beautiful. Uh, Ken, would you mind getting some color. great poupon for my friend? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing the truck. You know, I would have brought my Ascot monocle if I uh, knew the car was going to get so uppity on us. Sure. You can sit in your Devonshire. I think it's that new uh, chrome paint that he sprayed on there himself. It doesn't matter to me, it looks like a heck of a lot of fun to drive. Can't stick nobody in the other seat, Kev. It's just one guy. By himself. It's okay. And a little car. So, Joe, I just learned that this uh, little roadster here is polished aluminum. It is not chrome paint or a wrap. This guy, this guy got sore arms putting that thing together. I'll tell you right now. Yes. And CB, all kidding aside, you gotta dig that. Oh, yeah. A lot of work, a lot of work. I bet if an Airstream trailer rolled by, he'd start shaking and crying. <laughs> Alright, kid. I got this guy that didn't take my job in 10 years. What's your name? Slay. Seems like you need it. What's your name? Slay. Alright, where are you from? Maybe 12 years. Arizona. Arizona? Oh, where about? Where in Arizona? I've never been there. Should I go there? Yeah, but you know. Alright, what kind of cars do you like? All cars. Good answer. Maybe a politician can give you. What's your favorite car? Go sit down. Joe, the mission is to engage the next generation. Hey! Getting all up and he'd cop with an attitude. Oh, from Arizona. I'm like four shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, just kidding, just kidding. Yeah, that's true. <sighs> you don't even really want to be in that long. Oh, people in Arizona care. Oh. Okay. Oh. So you don't have any water. How are you doing? What? You want me to cross the street for you? Come on down. This is always trouble when someone tries to get your attention, Kevin. Usually they mistake me for somebody who really is famous. Usually I owe them money. Or they want a better spot for their car next year. That's possible, yeah. Don't kid yourself, Joe. I'll be right there. I promise. I'm not lying. You are famous. All right, Kev. Especially uh, when people that want better spots for their car. A lot from the King Ranch, Kevin? Yeah. Take a look at our F450. That is a clean. Very clean. Although we did miss a spot on the rear differential, if you want to let it up. Joe, leave him alone. The show's over. Hey, there's enough wax and polish companies in the world. He shows up with a dirty wheel. I, mean, I don't get it. I don't think he showed up with it. That, that might have happened uh, from that door over there to right here. Maybe look for that Lincoln Navigator over there. Our friend Jay Leno has his car care polish line. He'll take that smudge right off. Great looking truck. Thanks for coming. Ken, I don't know about you, but I just love these dynamic marketing uh, signs that are cropping up on all the vehicles. Hey. It took all about two seconds to make that one. I'll tell you what, dynamic marketing is this Honda over here with an LS motor in it. That, uh, there it is, there it is. All right, we're building this vehicle, we're building the vehicle, we're, the parts are coming in, we're working on the vehicle, we're getting it done. And then we paint the wheels blue. I mean, what am I missing? Ah, oh, I really like that. It's a new look. I saw that one guy like it. Where was it? Oh, he's driving. No, it's all good. It is all good. That is a, that is a really unique color, too. It's not, it's not blue. It's not, it's not green. It's kind of a turquoise. 
It's kind of like Doug Gibson. So he's got a Supertech Supercharger sticker on this. Is this thing Supercharger? And nitrous. Supercharge that. Joe, the wheels can be any color you want because it's supercharged and nitrous. Settle down. Hey, when their windshield battery promotes a seat cover, you know there's nothing under that hood. Come on. No, it's uh, the big trucks. When you see the big trucks going by, here's my man, Scott. Scott is one of the many SEMA sales associates who work with all of our manufacturers to make it happen. He's one of our. How long have you been there now, Scotty? Two years? Three years. Would you sneak in a year? Uh, where's your clients, Scott? Where are they? Thank you, Scott. We already promoted me. Joe, right behind you is a torpedo back Buick, a beautiful car. I think about a 46, 47. Let's talk to this driver. Hey, Kev, uh, I feel bad that that's one of the guys that I told to go right at the light. Oh, uh, what, what was the answer? Cliff, this thing is beautiful. What year is this? 41. 41, so I was, I was post-war, it's a pre-war car. Pre-war car. Yeah, but a lot of times when you do all the mods, I get thrown off because uh, the ones right before the war and the ones right after the war were still pretty close looking. Very, very close, yeah. You've done everything to this. My friend did the whole car, yeah. I, I'm not even saying about who did the work, I'm saying the amount of modifications, everything's been done to this. Everything's been done to it, yeah. So, uh, what's under the hood? About 350. Very nice, very nice. I love the color. What is it? Uh, it's like a pearl olive color. Pearl olive. Well, it sure looks beautiful, man. I hope you had a great time at SEMA. I saw this parked out in front. You were stopping traffic all the time. Thank you, man. Ken, do me a favor. Sure, anything. I love saying that. Go on. Ken, John Hotchkiss. Yeah. One, of, one of the coolest Mopars offered. Pull over, turn it off. A SEMA Hall of Famer. This gentleman has probably one of the premier sports suspension companies in the industry. He's a SEMA Hall of Famer. John Hotchkiss, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, John Hotchkiss. John, welcome to the SEMA Cruise. Uh, Kevin, man. Hey, Joe, how are you? What an incredible SEMA show. All right. Everybody have fun? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Hey, I've got a celebrity driver with me, Dan, who runs the SEMA office in Washington, D.C., piloting our EMAX. And then we have Miles from the U.K., all the way to see the SEMA show. So what an incredible adventure. I joined the SEMA Action Network to help promote laws that help the industry and save our race cars against those in Washington and in your state. SEMA Action Network, the SAM. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for being here. We'll see you over at United. Awesome, thank you guys. Uh, some very important information about uh, getting involved with keeping the right to have us build these cars. This TA Challenger is, uh, it's, a, it's a very authentic car in the standpoint of it gets driven a lot. And our friend John Hotchkiss doesn't drive it lightly. I mean, of all the cars in the show, this is probably one that is experienced the most pain on the street and track. Thanks for bringing out, great to see you guys. We'd like to remind everybody who is on foot traffic, if you're looking to get out, there's a, a crossing back over here on the way. How would you describe this? Uh, the entrance of the Seaver Cruise, while the crew is kind of entering our area with the bleachers, you can walk back towards that entrance area and cross the street and get out through a mid gate on the other side. So if you walk down towards the far end, the direction the cars are going, if you go that way expecting to get out, you're not going to. So turn around and come back this way. If you're looking that way, I don't want to be rude again, but I think, we, I think the Optimus Street Car Invitational guy is lost. We got, we got to help him out. He's like an hour late. Well, he's an hour late now, but I know this car, and this has a GM LSA supercharged 6.2. V8 under the hood, and this is making over 800 horsepower, and it's staying cool because staying cool because of a CNR radiator. Got Detroit speed parts on it. It's got Speed Tech suspension system. He ain't gonna be late for long. That's all I'm gonna tell you. Well, I don't care what he's got underneath that hood. He's an hour late. Whatever he's got, he's gonna step on the gas. He doesn't want to be late for that big event. He's good. He'll make it up. Kev, I like the look of these two Silverados. Yeah, do you really? Yeah, I do. I'm too small for them, so I gotta get the little midget model, like the color. This, uh, it's an interesting front end on these. A lot of people like them. A lot of people are thinking, I want to modify that a little bit, put a different grill on it. 
They're very nice trucks, I'll tell you that much. I got out of one, a full-size truck, it took me three seconds to get down. Three seconds? Yeah. I don't even know what that means. What do you mean? It took me three seconds from the time I opened the door to try to hit the ground. Oh. Yeah. Jason Seth Ryan making the move here. Jason, welcome to the scene of the show. Looking good. Jason's always got his hands into something. You know, Kevin? Oh, absolutely. Jason's a mover and a shaker. He's more of a shaker. Depends on time of day. <laughs> All right, everybody having a good time? Now it's kind of like seeing a cruise into the night. Kevin, like I was telling you, the sun's going to set. That's beautiful, you know, when you're not looking at the cars, there's a beautiful Vegas skyline over there to check out. Do you know what the, end of the SEMA show also announces, Kevin? Huh? I'm sorry, what's that? Do you know what the end of the SEMA show also announces? Uh, tell me, Joe. My return to <laughs> I've got a little Chardonnay waiting for me over at uh, a nice restaurant. Come on through, everybody. Keep on rolling, all white looking tight. There you go. This is a serious amount of white and a serious amount of fabrication on the suspension and chassis on this truck. All right, Kevin. I gotta get ready for this one. I know these jeeps are big. But this has to be, without question, no denying, factually, the biggest friggin' Jeep I've ever seen in my life. seems to be all-wheel drive, all-wheel steer, and, 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 and tracking a little bit sideways, much like our friend Joe will be after the SEMA show. <laughs> so they, uh, they've informed me that they have opened the crosswalk gates at the far end of the SEMA cruise, uh, so you can get out that side now. So everything I said before, take it back. So Ken, you know I'm the king of minibikes, right? This is a modified stretch ruckus, and uh, that's cool. Yeah, this is uh, one of the Honda Ruckus models that obviously got put through the paces, stretched out, modified engine. So it's kind of like a drag ruckus. Yeah, and they also mix up the Metropolitans and they split them in half with the Ruckuses and they call them Metrucks. It's amazing what they're doing with all the, the mini motos. I see that America Honda Motors is bringing back the new monkey, which is the uh, re uh, modern day version of the Z50 Honda. Oh, cool. It's got the uh, Honda Ground 125 engine and some of the Honda. But uh, yeah, it's fun to see how the power sport of the show has also grown over the years, too. You know, Kim? All right. Got some of our youth now coming through. Another growing segment here, seen as our power sports division. Yeah, these are some high performance side by side buggies coming in, and they're coming in hot. Watch it. Another cool little exterior work on the Shelby coming your way, Kim. Yeah, it's kind of uh, Shelby of the future, but back here in the present. The patina look applied through a rack, very cool. Uh, followed by a pigeon 53 Mercury tail dragger, traditional custom. Looks like something Tony Ginty would drive. That's actually paint, that's not a wrap? Oh, it's plastic dip, there you go. The, Mer the Mercury's got paint. Yeah, I think the Mustang was a wrap. The Mustang was actually plastic dipped, I was informed. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, too. I, uh, I was wrong. I'm used to it. Yeah, Kevin, you see all these modified lifted vehicles, you see all these accessorized Jeeps. It's just an indication of the uh, vitality of the industry. The aftermarket's strong, you know? The truck segment of the automotive aftermarket is giant. Uh, one of the councils here at SEMA, the LTA, the Light Truck uh, Alliance, is the, is the biggest faction of the SEMA uh, organization. And these guys, 
as evidenced by the amount of trucks and the amount of jeeps and off-road vehicles and the the technical term is about 5.6 billion different parts that you can buy and put on these things. Plus the fact you can make your own. This guy's gonna hear this thing all the way down as we come by in the back. No kidding, that was me, sir. The LED brake backing plates so you can really show off those wheels. But trucks are super hot and, and here we have some super hot trucks. I got a guy sending me a text last week that introduced him how to do the Let's tell him yes and then not do it. All right, that's what we're going to do. I'll say yes. He says no fart jokes either, Kevin. All right, we got a 90s Toyota Supra right here. These are super high performance cars. Always love these things with a uh, C7 Corvette stiffened right up behind it saying, I want a piece of that action. I want to show this Supra what it's all about. You know, I'm kind of limited in uh, my range after that big surgery, Kev, so instead of waving them on them, I'm, I think I'm sending in the wrong direction because I can only go halfway. Nice. Which surgery was that, Joe? That was the uh, bicep implant. I can see it from here. Yeah, oh yeah, they're working out. Yeah, well, that one side. Love this, the uh, early Power Stroke style big Ford F Series cruising on modern suspension and wheels. Backed up by an F 250 that uh, just, just short of being tall enough to walk under. Love it. Ken, I noticed that you were talking to another local celebrity. Uh, I was, but before we go there, let's take a look at the Ring Brothers K15 laser that's pulling up here. Why don't you pull it off to the side? I will. There is the truck that right over here, Jim. Jim Ring at the wheel, he sees me ask him to pull over and he says, oh man, really? Jim. Clicking my heels together trying to go home, but it ain't working. Yeah, I, I talked to you on Tuesday and you said you wanted to go home. <laughs> This, uh, this blazer is a little bit of a uh, departure from what you guys normally do, but it still has the ring quality and innovation. Tell me about it. Uh, 72 K5 blazer we did for a couple out of New York, but they're going to take it to their Florida home and enjoy it down there. Uh, new LS3, all new drivetrain. Uh, just tightened it up a little bit and hopefully enjoy it. It is awesome. It is so uh, uh, clean and the way it fits. There are details in this truck. If he was going to get out right now, he would show you that when you open the door, a modern-day SUV step bumper folds down. Did you see that? Yeah. This is a, a great example of a Restomod truck. We've seen a lot of Restomod cars. Now we're starting to see putting you know, the fuel injection and the leather. That's what's been around for a while, but you know, now we're adding things like these motorized bumper uh, step into the truck. And one thing I always have to say, Jim, you guys get the most stylish shirts of just about any car builder right now. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Great. Hey, Kev. Uh, did Jim did Jim get uh, mixed up in, on his way moving apartments? Yeah, he he went to a yard sale, I think, and uh, got some stuff to bring home. Oh, we're keeping it rolling here. Nice little Bobo coming your way. You don't see too many of these for all the obvious reasons. Yeah, these are hard to find here in the States. A lot of uh, the ones that were imported rushed away at nothing a million years ago. But this one is pretty intense. Uh-oh. Trouble. Trouble's
greasy looking rat rod. This guy's combining so many styles. Normally rat rods have performance looking suspension and big wide tires, but that guy's setting a trend. A Karma Rivero, ladies and gentlemen. That is a car you're not gonna see when you go down to the local Albertsons to buy your groceries later on. I'll tell you right now. Once again, Kevin. Once again, Joe, I just had my mind erased by that. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is going to be it. You can tell us too when they start to stand up. I'm behind the barrier now. I'm not going to see I'm just going to survive. Yeah, we'll see what's coming. For all the people here in the stands, there are a ton of more surprises coming here in the Sea of Cruise 2018. Are we having fun yet? Let us know what we got. Sure, we have a great time. I'm having a great time. Uh, I appreciate everybody here. I'll tell you what, I will go to a car show all by myself and walk up and down the aisles and I say all the same stuff even if nobody's listening. So sometimes I forget to consider that all you people are, are listening to my nonsense. I should I apologize for it. So this is the Ryan series show we have right now, baby. The Voodoo Ride, yeah, this is, uh, this is a 54, right? Incredibly wild car. Voodoo ride car care stuff. We got a lease. <laughs> you can always tell because they go with the red top. There's another one. Yeah, give it up for free swag, man. Well, they got another sales sign, it's another sign, it's up, please! Alright. Great looking 67 Camaro with flat white coming through. Full broke touring car, lots of custom work. Can't fly it from Nolan's, it's Gator Man, it's coming right at you. Gator Man. You'll see. I think it's easy being up here in front. It, I know it's not easy. Not easy to be in here. Oh, oh Christ, it's a lot of money. Look, <laughs> <again. laughs> okay, I already paid. I'm sorry. Slow it down, it's a cop in front of you, meatball. Yeah, jeez. You think he'd know, Kev? <laughs> You'd think he would. Where's Tony from the Bronx? Tony, get out here, man. Take care of my light work. Take that. C-Series custom camper looks like he has uh, right into a bit of a window stuck together and he's going down the road. Get these two guys are definitely lost. Oh, that's Tony. Tony, that's Tony. Tony, that's Tony. Tony, that's Tony. Tony, that's Nice crawler jig. That guy was eating plastic breakfast out of the backgrounds earlier. Kev, the folks from Fat Fabs have been uh, rolling out some nice vehicles. Here comes another one for you. This is super cool. Here we have another uh, K5 Blazer. Done in a different style from the Green Brothers we saw earlier. This sucker is slammed on air. Oversized traditional looking rally wheels. Nothing but style. Ken, this guy's looking for a title to sit in. I think he went out of bounds. He's out of bounds? He's looking for it. He says, can we play through? Well, we're creeping up to the, what is it? It's a Dusker Dawn. It happens like this. Uh, depends on where you are. Where, where are we now? It's both of those somewhere. All right, so it's... Seema into the night. We'll just leave it at that. That's right, man. How, uh, 
Let me take our legs to the as we get to our We're going to be able to lose the glasses in a little while. Yeah. I'm wearing mine for safety. Well, it is uh, 5.30 now, which means that we've been to the Cedar Cruise now for officially an hour and a half. Right on. Hours they had me out there, Ken. Oh, a little bit of land cruiser, by the way. Check that thing out. That looks like a fun ride. Joe, some of these people have been here for four, four hours? I think the bleachers were going up around noon. And some folks, as soon as they put the bleachers up, they were sitting down. I bet some of them probably closed in about five, six hours. And we love you and we appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about everybody who's here at the Seaman Cruise. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and this, this vintage looking Super Duty Ford pickup truck has a great story. Uh, that was built to be a full retro style pickup truck. And the guy that built it was transporting it here to the SEMA show, driving it across country out on a trailer. And people were taking pictures of it and posting them on Instagram and on Facebook and everything. And by the time he traveled two states, that thing had over two million impressions on Instagram. By the time he made it to Las Vegas, he parked and went to his hotel, and the doorman said, oh yeah, I haven't found that thing, here it is. And he says, what are you talking about? That thing had over four million impressions when it got here, and now it's way over that, because it tells you everybody likes to connect with a car or a truck from their youth, and that's the mission of that cool Super Duty with that retro look. And it's, it's really cool to see what can happen. So the moral of the story, Joe, is be careful what you're doing, because people are taking pictures. Chairman of the board of SEMA talking, and casually right behind him comes by an unbelievable Chrysler 392 supercharged Hemi Rat Rod with scroll work that looks like it's out of a vintage organ. Incredible, man. And it's a giant dragster. And Kevin, uh, to your point, that was the first vehicle that I took a photo of that I posted. Very cool, very cool. Right behind him was a Dodge Ram with people doing headstands in the back. The SEMA show is a traveling circus now here in the SEMA cruise. Back to you, Wade. 
Thank you, Kevin. You know, we have a very fit crowd that attends the SEMA show. Yeah. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, way back to you. Yeah, sitting inside that room where you indoctrinated uh, NP. And safety first, friends. Safety first. A couple of challenges here, huh? Had the opportunity to uh, uh, indoctrinate Don Yetherly as well as Chris Thompson and watching those guys up there. It's a special time and it's kind of like a kind of behind the scenes view. It's a great lunch. There's our Liberty Walk Lamborghini with uh, Cocktail Song driving it. Excellent exotics here at the show. Now wait. <laughs> Something's going, you don't even need words. There's the SEMA show right there. So what's your, after the SEMA show, I know you still remain busy. What's the uh, rest of the year look for you, Wade? What's your schedule look like? Yeah, after November, of course, we have the PRI show, which is all solved. And so that's coming up in the first part of December. And that's the Racing Industries SEMA show. Well, look, uh, thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Wade Kawasaki, he's a face that you'll see throughout the SEMA show now and for years to come. Congratulations. Hold on. So, hey, I want a big round of applause. Kevin Bills, Joe Severgagio, these guys are doing a great job out here working their butt off. Thank you, Wade. That was pretty cool. Thank you, Wade. So, crossing in front of me right now is the Boogie Van. I'm guessing about a 65? What year is the van? 1969 Chevy Custom Van. It's a straight axle gasser style van. Vintage graphics. 850 horsepower. You can tell by the camshaft. This thing is loping and it wants to go. This is about as polar opposite as that Lamborghini you saw just a couple cars before. So and he's a two to one to be arrested tonight as well, too, Kevin. A two to one. Being generous there, my friend. Hey, I think I just secured our gig for next year, too. Oh, yeah? I don't know. Wade Thanks. likes it. Man, thanks for talking with Wade. I appreciate that. Here comes Tom. We're keeping it moving. Yes, we are. I'm not going to say anything about that vest you're wearing. <laughs> Over the no, it looks good. It's a good look for you, Tom. I mean that. So, uh, Joe, did, uh, did I just lose our job for next year? Yes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's important to point out, though, that, that Wade Kawasaki, although he's a, a super big shot with SEMA, he's also a car guy through and through and has one here. I don't know if you noticed, but when you walked by, you asked him that vest made his butt look big. Now you lost our job. Thanks. Hey, how you doing? Hey, from around here? Yeah. How was the show for you? Apparently, Joe and I. How was the show for you? We're on separate contracts. You're having a good hair day. Not a, not a package deal. Oh, I'm not. I don't have any hair. Hey, uh, what are the chances of. Uh... <laughs> There's Joe chatting up the gal in the mustache. Well, I tried. Yeah, all you guys are big shots. Let's see you stepping up. Asking for the order. Hey, my wife's sitting right here, pal. Yes, I know that. Mine's not. <laughs> Shelby GT350 H convertible in white and gold, great looking color scheme on that thing. Followed by a uh, an angry looking extreme mutter lifted truck with some uh, hex stacks or uh, quad tip stacks out the back. Followed by a slant nose Porsche. Kind of a retro theme, not something you see here in the US every day. These gentlemen look like they're visiting from somewhere else. Our truck contingent continues to flex their muscles here. See a lot of lifted and leveled decals. You know, that's one of my favorite books. Lifted and leveled. Think oh, yeah, the dump group. Hey, hey, how you doing? Come on over. Hey, were you here earlier? Yeah, you get This is both comes. So I got two wheel Roland over here and his two Harley Davidson. He turned his luggage box into speaker wagons. Yeah, I don't think he's a part of the show or anything. I just think he's worked his way into the group. He's riding through. He's upset that he can't carry his lunch anymore because of the speakers in the box. Well, he does wear a helmet. And I give him props for that. Another clean Bronco, looking good. Got the high dollar leather in there. 
Very clean Bronco. And it looks like we might have some swag. T-shirt alert, ladies and gentlemen. These guys from the Broncos throwing some stuff out. We got ourselves police cap. I'm talking into my water bottle now. Here you go, guys. Yeah. Hey, hey kid, we got a dog. Representing a woman dog. That's the first one of the crews today, Jim. I really dig the treatment on that Bronco. Check out the tires. They painted the BF Goodrich logos in red, white, and blue. That's a really neat look. I dig that. Okay, we got a Capri Stomp rolling up with some Forky Auto wheels. Yeah, man. Representing all the different styles of cars that you can build here at SEMA with the dump. I gotta borrow that and bring it to my house. That's, That's about, a, neighbors. about a 74, I'm gonna say. And they just keep on rolling, Kev. They sure do, Joe. No end in sight, my friend. We've got a 68 Camaro coming up. Another modern pro touring style, custom pieces, the whole grills fab, flush glass. Trick tubular suspension, aluminum wheels. He's hoping he's got enough in the tank right now. Kev, I see another vehicle you're gonna absolutely love. Little clean GPO. There we go. Young looking supermodel couple. Life's good. Got the red lines. She's not gonna even look at me. I know. No, the, the girl in the Mustang already texted her. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the girl in the Camaro's been calling. Yeah. So a square body that is slammed and on the ground, but still kind of, I don't want to say patina, but well-worn looking paint. I love trucks like that. This is something you can drive and enjoy and not worry about getting digged up in the local grocery store parking lot. And Joe, you're right, that GTO is killer. That's the Kim Diggett Design GTO. Beautiful How about a round of applause for our Las Vegas Metro? Yeah. They got one lap to go. They've done a great job. Every once in a while, Kim, I gotta put a Lambo on a trailer, you know? Yeah. I've, I've never actually done that, Joe. Oh, yeah. It's not that I hear a record photo put on a trailer. It comes with it when you buy it. Huh? Oh. <laughs> there goes our job again. Look, if I can't sell it anything, I don't want to own it. Right on. Here comes uh, a satin BMW sporting the Toyota Tires logo right in the front glass. A little McLaren action for you. Full cage, big brakes. Turbo Leaf, followed by a McLaren, ladies and gentlemen. A beautiful car. It's got a, a license applied for a registration sticker on the on the license plate. Either he just bought it or he's borrowing it from his best friend, and that makes for a great best friend. Kevin, I'm not sure if this is a two-door or a shaped four-door. That is actually a three-door, Joe. These Suburbans came from the factory with a driver and passenger front door and only a passenger rear door. That is not custom. But the rest of the truck is flush door handles. How you doing? Good satin blue paint, tuck bumpers, lower, cowl hood, custom interior. I love that Targa's sliding sieve roof. You know, they, uh, they're they great on sunny days. You don't want to get caught in the rain. Beautiful blue color, great looking Suburban. Kevin, this gentleman has a question. I'll have him ask as he goes by. Sure. Ask Kevin. Can I do a burnout? It looks like about the fastest taxi cab yep. around. Can I do it? I would probably. That's a good looking blue right here, Kev. The Ford Platinum. Going through the Platinum lot. A little green mat. We got there a little BMW action. I don't know. I can't keep up with all these cool cars. How you doing up there? Are you Omar? Who are you? Chris. How's it going, Chris? Where are you from? And who do you represent? Dallas, Texas. Representing Team Bennett, the Omar Bennett. Did you have a great SEMA show? Maybe. See you back next year. 
show this awesome F-250 rolling through is providing a whole light show, lighting up the whole night. You're right, it is starting to get dark, and that is when this thing is really shining. Platinum Super Duty, full custom suspension, great blue color. Yeah, the off-road segment's really getting big. We had uh, a huge contention of these trucks. You talk about earning your keep being an off-road desert racer. Oh, yeah. The Kid Dick Corvette that uh, Joe was mentioning, this was another car that came across our stage Monday night at the Seam Reveal. Beautiful, beautiful car. This is the one I was talking about for those who were here in the very beginning. The trim on the car is all hand done. The fit is all hand done. The Kid Dick and design team does a great job. It's really neat to see this one rolling on its own power at the Seam Cruise. That's the beauty of it too, Kev. There's no posers. You know, we've attracted not only the best of the best, but all of them are able to roll down the road. Now, no posers, just us. Speak for yourself, big guy. <laughs> I'm trying to get your job back here. I want to say, Kevin, that I'm thoroughly impressed with your automotive suit, knowledge, and your personality. <laughs> okay, you're hired. Well, I didn't quite say that. Rock. There'll be none of that. Ah, that rock. Such a crazy little kid, isn't he? I bet you can't do that in the platinum lot. Well, he did ask, Kev. I just didn't answer him. Yeah, well, we got to make sure everybody gets through here because if something happens and we jam this up, the SEMA Cruise will be uh, here forever. How's everybody doing up there? Hey, the trucks. Nice and clean, a little dually action here. Heck okay. yeah. Let's pack in with 60 guys. Why not? Drive around with them. Well, there's a ratio thing we work with, right? <laughs> 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 uh, you're one of those guys, huh? I know. What, about 2800 a month? 2800 a month? 80 down? They'll be calling you. They'll be calling you. Joe, you sound like you're speaking from experience. No, not at all. Another rolling light show with these lifted four trucks. You know, the uh, the SEMA show is all about new products and new cool stuff. And the, the LED technology has just advanced so far and is being used in so many different ways. Uh, right now, we're lighting up the whole street with these lifted trucks that are all lit up underneath. And we got a couple of Porsche GT cars coming through, two and a three RS. Carbon Bre 17 bomber with all the angles and satin surfaces on it. Way too many sharp edges on that one for me, kid. Yeah, he wants to slip in and out without being noticed. There we go. Crazy ride. Oh, another Riviera coming. Give me a little mood light. Just give me that first light switch. You gotta know how to play that, man. There you go, now we're looking at a 71 oh, ride. Yeah, see? How you going? That's like somebody's got a nice suit on with bad shoes. You gotta help them out. Right? You know, you're only judged by three things in your life. Your spouse, your house, and your car. And your shoes. <laughs> sure. Car 72. 
72, I can tell it's a 72 boat tail style Riviera. The 71 had fins, louvered fins in the deck lid. The 72, they took them away. But uh, these cars are one of those styles where you either love it or hate it. That one, I love. It's been blacked out, it's got a great stance, and it's got an interesting option. This is the right arm phone holder option. It comes with two right arms that stick out the passenger side that hold cell phones for you as you drive. Not to mention the optional T-top ejector seat kit. Yeah, right, right. 455 Buick, tons of torque, endless style on that car. Love to see it. I just wasn't expecting this out of you, sir. What's your name, bud? Holmes. Your name is bud? Yeah. Wow, I got that right. What is this? It's a little dude buggy. Working again. 200cc, goes 40 miles an hour, he's for air three level. Right. Nice way to get involved in the motorsport section. Can I have this one? Can I have this one? Yeah. Hey, thanks. That was easy. Okay. There you go, man. I just got a new truck. People like you, Joe. They do. I donated the, the very cool Ford F1 pickup truck. Oh, well. Oh, bud. Sporting an EcoBoost motor. Very cool. Nice to see. What is this? Copper in the back? Polished copper. And uh, it doesn't make any noise, but I bet it's fast. Nice truck, guys. Once again, Ken, I'd like to give a big shout out to our sponsors for the SEMA Cruise, Rolling Big Power, Kia, Anzo Lighting, Mother's Polish, Shell, and Hot Wheel, celebrating their 50th anniversary with us right here at Ken at the SEMA Show. Right here, man. Right here, right now, live. It's a SEMA cruise, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming out and spending some time with us. Otherwise, it would just be Joe and I watching all these cool cars, and I'd feel guilty about that, that we weren't sharing. So, I'm glad you decided to come out. Another Supra. This one's breathing its turbo exhaust right out the fenders, which means it's a race car. It is. One of the participants in the 2018 Ultimate Adventure. And I took my sunglasses off for safety. I, first mistake, never look right down the barrel of the turbo exhaust. Or date a married woman. Yeah, that too. lights are coming out. All those LED things you were talking about. I know, we're going to see them all tonight. And right in front of that, we are talking about the Yanko cars before. Here we've got a Chevy Nova with a Yanko style stripe on it. And this one has a, uh, a full cage, pro street style rear suspension, giant wheel tubs, giant wheels, ladder bars out the back. He's got the exhaust coming out the fenders too, but he's going to be a lot nicer and not spit at me with fire. Or what uh, Rick Johnson would describe as one of those skinny Novas, Kevin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Telling you, man, kind of digging the, uh, the light show provided by our lifted trucks. It must be cool to be in a giant parking lot with a whole bunch of these things lined up late at night with all the lights on. But now that I think about it, that can happen at Ignited right here tonight. Well, there's a new van. That's adopted a little old school van. Look, it's a custom Dodge van. Got the uh, quad exhaust sticking out the side. Yeah, he's got like zoomy pipes out the side. So when I was younger, I had a 1979 Dodge Maxi van, full conversion, and uh, I've kind of been maybe jonesing for another one. Very cool. Good to see the vans coming back. Hey, thank you, man. Holy airbrush work. You need to get some of those LED lights from under those trucks and shine them on the side of that van because there's dragons and all kinds of scary stuff painted on that one. Well, here's a, a cool little Merc. Looks don't, like it did back in the day, Kev. Yeah, don't let that one fool you, Joe. You were talking about the resto mods. This guy's sitting on a modern chassis with a modern engine, but the outside looks like this thing could have been racing in the LA River in the movie Grease. Super cool car. 
We see a lot of those on the West Coast, those big full-size fat body cars. I dig one. You know, I was lucky enough to buy Firebirders 51 Fleet Line, which I still own. You still have one? Yep, I kept it in line. I put a 261 in there, a Saginaw 4 speed, and I'm gonna drive the hell out of it when I get home. You should, that's that's a cool old school ride. More interesting graphics on this lifted F-250. This thing looks like it's been through a war. Well done. Once again, Kevin, I'd like to uh, remind folks to check out Meekum Auction, Meekum.com. Find out their latest schedule of upcoming auctions near you. Over 60 auctions planned for this year. Meekum Auction, the premier auction event series. Toyota Old School. There's a Meekum Auction coming up right here in Las Vegas in a couple of weeks, Joe. There certainly is. I dig Vegas, Ken. I've had a great time. It's a great place for us to have our event. In fact, it's the only place where we can have the SEMA show because no one has the number of hotel rooms to accommodate the crowd this size. No one has a venue this large to accommodate an event this size. Uh, Las Vegas is a perfect town for us and they're great partners. And we really love coming out here annually like I'm sure everybody else does. I love Vegas when it's the SEMA show. I like Vegas all the time, but I, I like it more now. I really think it's Cadillac. Now we're looking at a 63 Cadillac, and this one's pretty trick because he's shaved a lot of the side trim to smooth it out and really kind of bring out that long arrow style shape with the shorty tail fins. By 63 Cadillac, we're starting to get away from the tall tail fins. And these uh, 63 and 4 cars are about the last time you see those before they went to kind of an integrated fin. The neat car to see. Well, Ken, you'd be the one to let him know he left the sticker on his tires, though. <laughs> hey, you know, you know what they say. Oh, come on over here, Carlos. Hey, you got a hell of a guy and a hell of a cat. Say hello to my main man, Carlos. Carlos, go over there and say hi to Kevin Osteen. Carlos has been a part of the wheel industry forever. Makes some things happen, works with Lexani. Let's see how the SEMA show was for Carlos, if you don't mind, Kev. No problem, we'll bring Carlos over and, and say hi. Hi, Carlos. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, man. So you've been in the uh, the wheel industry, I understand, for quite some time. Yeah, I've been in the wheel industry at the same company, what we would consider would be the best wheel company, not to be biased, but we're Lexani Wheels. We're an international company. We do one-piece cast wheels. We do three-piece forge wheels and anything in between. Lexani is always known for having one of the star attractions here at the SEMA show with your display. Uh, amazing stuff. What'd you bring on to this year? Well, as you can see, I'm in our brand new, you know, limited edition Dodge Demon. We uh, had it hooked up and worked with a couple of partners. We worked with West Coast Customs, Wallace oh, Topo, oh, Wide Body King, we did a one-off body kit. We've got APR, uh, what do you call it, rear, uh, rear wing front splitter. We've got Accuware and Universal Air System for our, you know, being able to drop it on the ground, basically. Uh, what else? Uh, RPM roll cage with uh, six harness seat belt. So, you know, we did a little bit to it. You don't need to do much to a Demon. No, and uh, so the Demon is a ton of horsepower, around 800 and some from the, fa 900 from the factory, right? Where, where are you going with this thing now? Well, we haven't done anything mechanically because we had to get it here to SEMA. So, you know, you know what that's like. You, you just did everything else. We did everything else you needed to do. I mean, I don't know if there's too many people in the past bringing that to LA. So I think we're good. Are you driving this back down? Go out here and drive it back. Love to hear it, man. Hey, listen, great to meet you, Carlos. Very cool. Appreciate you for taking part in the SEMA cruise. Great car. If you're on the highway back to Los Angeles, friends, step aside and let our man go. Because uh, he's going to win. All right, that was our friend Carlos Brock from Lixani Wheels. Thanks for hooking that up for us, Kip. They keep on coming. We got a little, uh, I don't know here, we got a little Tesla action maybe wrapped up. Yeah. The old school sport compact coming our way. Got a sad Tesla followed by a uh, 3 Series BMW. KJ 
Coach Carr, looks like he does some drifting looking at that rear suspension. Got a very sinister black El Camino coming through. 1970 car wrapping the pipes for us. Got a giant white and purple Dodge Ram pickup truck with more of the LEDs. Some of these street crawler wheels, like I like to call them. Low profile tire on a big wheel and a lifted truck. Kev, I'm up here in front. Tons of cars still in line. Got a little go-wing action up here. How you doing? What's your name? Ashley. Got a little nervous, nervous there, Ashley. What's the matter? Where are you from? Wyoming. Wyoming? You know, a lot of people ask me if I'm from Wyoming. Why is that? No one's ever asked me if I'm from Wyoming. So, uh, you like what you see? Absolutely. Any favorites? Some of your favorite cars. Joe, Joe, real fast, I want to point out this split window Corvette that's coming through. This is another kitchen oh, design car. Beautiful, beautiful blue Corvette for those who dig those. Go ahead. Look at Kev Dog. Kev Dog's coming through in his Mercedes. You know, Kev Dog got engaged here in Vegas, I understand. Right. From uh, Kidnigan Designs. How about a nice round of applause for Kev Dog? Give it up. Pull over there, Kevin. Say hi to Kevin. It really takes something to customize a gullwing bench. How's it going, man? Oh, I can't complain. I'm so happy this year has been amazing. So, uh, Joe just said that you got engaged here. I did, I did. I was lucky enough to ask my girlfriend of almost five years to marry me on the, uh, win the Westgate on the uh, Motor Trend stage. So she said yes, so everything is good. Everything is good, besides the fact that you're driving the Gullwing that you guys just finished up again did. Right, right. I mean, what better way to leave SEMA in this beautiful 55 Gullwing? It takes a special personality to want to customize one of these cars. Uh, we, I know we're starting to run out of ideas, so we had to try something new. <laughs> well, as it's sitting here idling, it's making voltage, it's not heating up. What's under the hood? Uh, it's an LSX 454. It's on a Roadster shop chassis. This thing's ready to hit the track. Awesome, awesome car. Congratulations on a great show. Say hi to the team for us. Thanks for taking part in the SEMA crew. Hey, thank you, guys, and thanks for coming out. See you next year. Right on. These two obviously think they're at the Macy's Parade, Kev. <laughs> Gullwing Mercedes on a roadster shop chassis, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All right. I need some action. Otherwise, I get bored. How about a Leggings Hot Rods built? Grade 8 contender that went for the Riddler Award at Autorama this year. This Pontiac is insane. Look at the dashboard, Joe, as he, as he drives by. Oh, amazing, Kevin. I'm digging every part of it. What's your name, sir? Steve Liggins, Liggins Hot Rod. Steve, how does it feel to have one of the coolest cars at the CV show? It's great. Make, make the most of it, brother. You can't see it from the stands, unfortunately, but the dashboard on this car is actually taking from the design of a 60s Chrysler, where everything is rounded, and they took it to their friends at Dakota Digital who made custom numbers for it. It's a globe that's all lit up. I could see it from here. The numbers spin around the Speedo needle. It's insane. That's a sunroof going over the top with stainless bars. Pontiac details through and through. Great, great car. Thanks to Steve Leggins for bringing that thing out. Great job. Hey, Kev, Ew. these guys are definitely getting stoned in their car. You think so? I think so. Are you telling me to stay clear? It's legal here. It is. Right on, man. Damn! That's an indica straight, I think. I love that LED strobing effect on the woofers in the back. It makes like a time stand still. You wanted some action, Joe. You just got it. I did, man. You know, like a like an indirect vape hit. You know, I brought my vape pen, but Party Rock is in the house tonight. Again, representing lifting and level, probably from the West Coast.
It's a cornucopia of cool car stuff, Ken. Uh, it sure is, and uh, we've been seeing a lot from the Broncos, but we're also seeing some international scouts here. This one is the only one I've seen that's lifted on modern off-road style suspension, uh, completely anodized, a lot of custom stuff. Very cool looking truck, man. Thanks for bringing it through the SEMA Cruise. Little love for the corn binders, the international. Yes, we will rock you, my friends, with car after car and truck after truck from SEMA 2018. This looks like our first uh, Mercedes G-Wagon of the night, Joe. We had a, a few of them with us, I recall, from last year. They kind of work. You see a lot of them on the West Coast. I'm good with everything, you know, even the Mercedes. Oh, yeah. Kevin, you're gonna go to go to the big movie, Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. It's a heck of a story about uh, the band Queen, right? I heard it was terrible, you should stay home. Uh, thank you for saving me about 11 bucks. <laughs> That's just for the soda, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. It tells you how much I go to the movie theater. Any Adam Lambert fans? Just kidding. <laughs> Have you ever owned a Jeep? Uh, I have not actually owned a Jeep. I've ridden in many. Uh, our, our restoration shop, we've worked on quite a few of them. Have you owned a Jeep? I I didn't have to because I worked with Omics ADA and they always let me drive Jeeps. And I used to have access to Arlie Emery, the Gunny's Jeeps, who was a spokesperson for us. Oh, cool. And uh, it was fun until I tried to get out of it. I kept hitting my head on that roll bar over and over and over. This is how we learn. I So my Jeep face, sir? Sir? Do you think this is a good time to be making a phone call? Who are you calling? To get a free runner. Calling my mom. Oh, wants to be quiet? Coming home. Are you really gonna come home? Oh yeah, I'm coming home. And that's really your mom you're calling? Absolutely. Did you have a good SEMA show? Oh yeah, absolutely. Well keep it going, brother. Welcome to the SEMA show cruise. Hey, buddy, we appreciate you calling your mom. Just going to ask you to do it down at the other end. Kev, you know, you too could reach this prime demographic right here, right now. Oh, yeah. Here's seeing more lifted Jeeps, more LED lights. I'm thinking we got it. It may be real, Kev. You got to tell me. Here it comes. Uh, I'm gonna say probably not, but you know what, Joe? That doesn't even matter because the fun, the fun is real, without a doubt. There's a couple representing Bell Tech, some clean pickup trucks. You remember yeah. Bell Tech from back in the day, right, Kev? Sure do. It's another company that's still going strong today, man. One of the innovators of the Bell Tech drop spindle. That was actually Super Bell X company. Right on. Jim Ewing turned that into Bell Tech. I remember the first time I brought a spindle to the editors at Carcraft for a product release. They told me, they threw me out of the office, Kevin. <laughs> they said, what the hell is that? It's like, well, you put it on Firebirds or Camaros and it lowers the stance. Yeah. They wanted no part of that. Well, you know, some of those guys were about as cool as an oven. But then, uh, the man behind Belltech created that Corvette rear roll pan that got so popular on the back of the pickup trucks. And Eddie Van Halen had one. He certainly did. I actually have the keychain from that truck because at the time I was a publisher of Sport Truck Magazine. Yeah, you sure you may remember Sport Truck Magazine. That was There's a great issue for us and that was a great high profile vehicle build that we did along with many others. But uh, yeah, trucks are cool. Another little error, making its way through. That little 57 there was done by a guy you know, his name is Chip Boos. Yes, is that uh, my main man, Carson Love? Hey, Carson, hook over there, say hi to Kevin. Come on over here with the 57. Yes. Uh, now you talk way. about a man that's had a history, not only with working with the iconic Chip Foose, but also worked in Mattel for many years. Yeah, with Carson Love. 
I did want to point out that orange uh, 68 Firebird that went by. Not a Camaro, good to see the Firebird. But now we got Carson Lev in the Foose 57 and Ed. I'm sorry, Josh. Uh, Carson, uh, my, my arm isn't long enough to reach him, so tell me what's going on here. Well, we're just trying to get this thing over to see McNutt stuck in the same lineup everybody else is. Yeah, but it's a line of nothing but SEMA cars. A lot of eye candy, that's for sure. Yeah, that's why it became the SEMA Cruise. This thing is unbelievable, and I'm going to guess uh, from when I talked to Chip last, about a week ago this was still in a million pieces. About five days ago this was in a million pieces. <laughs> Well, Carson, I'm not going to hold you guys up. Thanks for stopping to chat with us. Please uh, say hi to the crew. Nice to see you, Josh. Ladies and gentlemen, get a good look at this uh, Aqua 57 Chevy. It's on a custom chassis. This one has had all the panels touched in some way. It's a full custom color, and Chip Foose's team was putting this together in real time of just a few days before the SEMA show. They pulled it off. It looks dynamite. All right, friends, we have a couple people we're bringing back out. Mr. Tanner Faust and A.J. Janik. How about a nice round of applause for Tanner Faust and A.J. Yeah, Janik, everybody? Applause. A.J., what's up? Oh, nothing much. We're, we're just kind of waiting for the SEMA cruise to pass by. We know it's almost done, maybe. It's still going, but we're actually headed to SEMA Ignited because at 7.30, we're going to be announcing the Battle of the Builders winner. So we hope to see you guys there. And anyone have their favorites? So who do you think is going to win? Anyone? They're all winners, AJ. They're all winners, right? yes. AJ, tell us, what are you up to? What? Uh, who am I talking? Who's talking? It's me, Joe. Oh, OK. Oh, Mike. Oh, there you are. How what are you? I, I know you've been I, busy. What do, you, what do you have on the schedule after the SEMA show? I'm going to rest. And you have, uh, your young son is no longer a young son. He's almost as big as your husband, I understand. He is. He's a big boy. He's eight years old, so we're gonna, I'm going to spend some uh, quality time with him when I get home. Well, we look forward to getting him out here and having he him a part of the show. He will be here soon. He loves cars. Great. Thank you, A.J. Tanner. Uh, so you, you getting excited about uh, finding out who's going to win tonight? Yeah, they won't tell us. You know, we're in the trailer. You know, it would be nice to know, just so you know, we could get some questions loaded. They just won't tell us. So it's kind of building up the anticipation for us also. Uh, I think it's going to be close. And, um, you know, the format is very different. I've only done it the last two years, but the format this year is very different than last year. So you've got uh, a totally different mix of cars. It's not all about... Um, you know, just old Deuce Coupes, uh, to be honest, that are gorgeous and amazing, but there's a lot more variety this year, so we'll see what happens over there. Well, I think it's really awesome that you guys announced the winner of the Young Guns uh, part of that competition here earlier tonight. Uh, tell me, uh, you are a guy who connects with a lot of the, the younger crowd with what you do. Tell me about the importance of that. Well, I think it's critical, you know, they're the next generation of drivers and we live in a time when uh, some 16-year-olds would rather get a new phone than a driver's license. So it's important to uh, keep feeding the passion that uh, the young, young drivers have. The Young Guns, for those of you that don't know, is for uh, builders, fabricators, owners under 27 years old. And um, these guys, they're, they're putting blood, sweat, and tears into these cars, not just uh, you know, representing their companies or, or uh, putting big dollars in. That's really a lot of passion that drives the bills that we see from the Young Guns category. So um, I love it, and I think it's a critical, just a critical category to, to represent. And we've got a finalist from the Young Guns fighting for the win here in about 45 minutes. So Tanner, uh, most of us got into cars at a young age. What was your, your earliest recognition, you know, your earliest memory of having an experience with a car that, that really hooked you? you know, do, do you remember back that far? Do I remember back that far? I'm not that old. Come on. Oh, that hurts a little bit. <laughs> that was actually meant for Joe. <laughs> Uh, I do. I remember it like it was just a couple weeks ago. I was five years old. I was with my dad. Uh, we were going from Colorado Boulevard to Hamden um, in Denver, which is a sweeping right second gear corner, and he had a 912B, which is uh, about the slowest Porsche ever made, uh, which I now own. But uh, it's this yellow Porsche going around a corner, and the tires were squealing, and I was going off. The first time I'd ever heard that. And uh, he said, well, the tires must be low. Let's not talk to your mom about that. And it was, uh, I, paid, I paid attention to every single 
single gear shift, every car noise, every headlight shape since that in my life. And I think, like a lot of people here, that was a moment for me that just became, I became a car enthusiast and that never changed. Like you see throughout SEMA, people are lifelong car enthusiasts. I love it. That's an awesome memory, Tanner, and uh, I appreciate you sharing that. It's our mission to have those experiences again with more young kids. Tanner, AJ, I know you guys got to rock. Thanks for taking a minute to share with us, and good luck over at Ignited. Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see the winners crowned shortly at SEMA Ignited. Hey, everybody, I want a nice round of applause for Tanner and AJ. Yeah, you should have asked to put expensive car vlog when he got all rich and famous. That's what I like. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Joe, be careful. You're going to get shot with a t-shirt cannon if you're not careful. Is that a t-shirt in your gun or are you just happy to see me? Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, more opportunities for some swag. We've got these guys in this black truck shooting off the t-shirt cannon left and right. Everybody be alert because this thing's for real. Look at that, that thing flew about 150 yards. Stay alert when you catch that shirt. Our friend here is uh, driving a VW and he's got a bicycle on top in case he runs out of gas, Joe. This is a pretty, far, small, a pretty smart fella, Kevin. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Got a very cool 32 Ford with a laid back glass and a little teardrop hard top on top. Traditional scallop paint scheme. Followed by one of the younger builders, Mr. Brandon Wargo, busting out his uh, two ATZX. That is a Datsun that is actually half Cadillac. Look that one up on the internet. Hey Kev, this, uh, this next scooter coming in comes from the Pride Mobility Group. Uh, it's got the uh, one horsepower electric engine and the adjustable seat. That oh, I'm is, sorry. I, uh, this is an awesome ride. Awesome truck. Big old Ford on air, wide open bed. Carrying audio, carrying the bike, carrying the matching scooter. Right on, buddy. Thanks for joining the SEMA Cruise. Scooter with a nitrous bottle on the back. And the scooter's got the train horn. Kid, we are two hours and 20 minutes into this SEMA cruise. I think really? So. Yeah. The cruise might not be going by fast, but the cruise is going by fast, if you know what I mean. So this is one of these slingshot vehicles that I saw. You can actually demo them on site, take a ride, look pretty cool, having some fun. Just another example of how some of the new ways you can go down the road. Yeah, that thing's like a, it's like a roller coaster ride that you can drive on the street. You know, you look at this thing and you expect to pull the bar down over yourself and, and click yourself in. That thing looks like an awesome time. Very cool ride. How fast do those go, Ken? I wonder. What's that? I wonder how fast those things go. Probably pretty quick, huh? Like motorcycles. Yeah. Look, the white wall is part of the ring. Oh, I bit on that. I fell for it. <laughs> she got me, Kev. Warrior Dog Foundation, probably one of another worthwhile programs or promoted here at the SEMA show. We had some uh, veterans that were with us enjoying their uh, trip out here. Many of them uh, earned Purple Hearts. Yeah, certainly hope they enjoy their trip. Oh, I, I, I know they have. It's a blessing to have those folks with us to celebrate them and all their efforts. Any military folks that are here with you. We salute you. Absolutely, Joe. We salute you. Thank you guys for all you do. And gals. All right, Kev. Another cool little Pontiac coming our way. A little rag top action. Right. Just, just the color you like. I'm also digging this uh, this red Chevy Apache pickup truck. What is it, about a 58? Yeah, with the Stay Bill logo on the side. Also from 1958. We all pour uh, stable in the Midwest and in colder climates in your gas tank when you store your car for the winter. A problem you don't have here in Las Vegas. Yes, but if you open your door, you'll attract tarantulas, Kevin. Yeah, there you go. Or scorpions, whatever they call them out here. <laughs> Great looking GTOs, uh, 66? 67 GTO. This one's been uh, modified a little bit. Some of the trim has been taken off. It's been smoothed out. 
four people enjoying the ride. How's the SEMA cruise? Having fun? Everybody's bobbing their heads and giving me thumbs up. So I guess that either means yes or you guys don't speak English. No, Kent, there's oh, plenty of food. Thanks for coming. Track tested race Camaro coming through. This thing's like NASCAR right here at the SEMA Cruise. Yeah, oh, yeah. More Jeeps coming through and some. Kevin was really impressed with Kia and not only their indoor display, but the fact that they got so many Kia vehicles out to the builders. They're looking pretty nice and pretty clean. Outstanding job by Kia of late. So fill me in, Joe. I understand that Kia had a giant display here that involved uh, the addition of 100 truckloads of dirt at one point. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, Kia took over the area between the center hall and the south hall where Chevrolet used to do their ride and drive. And the task that they had is that they can only set up Monday night after 10 to be completely ready for their experience, which really was more of an off-road course setup. So in a matter of like 12 hours, they had to bring over, I don't know, 20 million tons of the dirt. They had to chase the course, chase the course of the whole parking lot. And just like everything else that happens magically here at the senior show in a couple hours, voila, instant off-road road course, no stress expressed. But it was, I was amazed at the fact they were able to do that. There's a gentleman in an old Salisbury. You don't find those too often. That's incredible. That Kia display is another thing that could probably only happen in Vegas. Well, you know, even when Chevy was doing it, Kevin, it wasn't so much that what needed to be done was unsurmountable. It was just getting it done in like a tenth of the time that it would normally take. So in typical Vegas fashion, all that takes is writing a bigger check. Yeah, this is true. We got a little gasser action kind of staged up here at the entrance. A little blower action sticking out of the hood. Yeah, a little vintage gasser uh, train horn. Speaking of gassers, I was really impressed with Finnegan's gasser when he uh, took over the streets at Woodward. Did yeah. a good job. I bet that was a great time. The cherry bomb, Kevin. Yeah? Tilted front, 468 cubic inches. Got a little metal flake action going, a little wheelie bar action going, pearl wings. It's got a power tilted front. Even better. Very cool, 57 210 platform, post coupe with a minimal trim. Wheelie bars, chromed out old rear end, just like they had back in the day. The vehicle behind it. This would still fall into that rat rod category. Kevin, are we looking at maybe as these vehicles evolve an evolution of the rat rod category? Yeah, and now they uh, kind of go full circle. What's amazing about those vehicles to me, Kevin, is I thought early on that the rat rods were just a little bit more like visual. You know, the deep down outside of the exterior, it really wasn't as tight, but Man, as these vehicles become more popular, they're becoming even better engineered. Engineered, you know, I'm glad you used that word because some of the uh, some of the rat rods out there look like you just took a little pickup truck and put it through an antique store and all the stuff stuck to it. But there are a lot that are very interesting the way they engineered them, put them together, a lot of creativity. And here's something you don't see every day: a Euro spec Scirocco uh, One, right? Yeah, we're a little opposite end of the spectrum again, Joe. Hope the one I've seen the last couple of years. Yeah. Gray market colors and headlights. Visiting us from Japan. Over 138 different countries represent them here at the scene of the show. Absolutely. You can roll up here, Mr. DTV. Come on up. Keep things going. Everybody's going to be heading over to the platinum lot. For the big SEMA Ignited, we're going to be announcing the winner of the Battle of the Builders. Once you get all the SEMA crew sponsors, we'd like to give them a big round of applause. Uh, Rolling Big Power, Brothers Polish, Shell Oil, Answer Performance, Hot Dog, excuse me, the Hot Wheel 
Legos Legends and Kia. Well, this guy is hell bent on running me over, Kev, so. Yeah, he looks like he's gonna do it. This is a clean super, these guys came here from Japan. Nice to see ya. You think, uh, you know, we build cars in the Midwest and bring them out to the SEMA show. Nowhere near as difficult as bringing a car from a different country, especially one separated by water. Yeah, there were people that had problems getting here, like from Washington, D.C., let alone different countries. And as a collective, all of these guys did a great job getting the vehicle together, getting it to Vegas. And now, as it all kind of comes to an end, there's going to be a lot of celebrating going on across the street, that's for sure. Supercharged alcohol burning sand buggy here. This thing's insane. A little clue, a clean GTR action. Yeah, there's Godzilla, buddy. There's your own nice clean square body truck. You're gonna love Kevin. What's up, Mikey? I'm here with Mike Rebello with the Young Guns. Mike, what's going on? Let's keep them moving. Yeah, we are. We're trying. Trying to get everybody over here for the big CMA United Bash. We got the Young Guns, we got the Battle of the Builders. There's nice clean little fastback Mustang coming your way too, Kev. Lots and lots of action over at CMA United. We know it's fun to kind of cruise through here, but we need to keep everybody moving. That's a good looking truck. Mikey, how are we looking back there? We got a lot more? Tons. Tons. Thousands and thousands. We got tons. Mikey sounds like a count. Thousands of cars. Good looking GTA Mustang. We've got a USAF themed BMW. I8 electric car coming through. The Lexus hot rod in front of it. A clean little Porsche coming your way. Looks like a uh, big tank Grand Sport Corvette coming through as well. Very cool little car. And a train horn, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what's in the Osti garage? What are you tooling around in nowadays, Kevin? Well, gee, Joe, so do you remember uh, our 62 Ford Galaxy 500 XL convertible? I certainly do. The red one, we still got it. Love that car. That uh, that car changed my life in many ways, and, and I think that's a great story. A lot of times you get in your old car and, and you think it's just an old car. That car, I was driving on the Hot Rod Power Tour many, many years ago. Joe was there doing the event staff, and uh, I broke the car like every night just because it was a kind of a recent restoration and it wasn't fully sorted out yet. Uh, one of the cities in Milken was St. Louis. And a person that helped me repair that car overnight is my lovely wife sitting over here waving her hands. And that's the night we met was because my car broke down on a cross-country trip. So old cars, we like to say old cars make new friends. Uh, some of them, you know, you stick with for life. Well, that was not a setup. And you're making me cry now. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, it couldn't happen to two nicer people. Ah, oh, thanks, Joe. Kevin, I got another lease and somebody gets lost. Nice. Coming your way. So we got some more off-road racers, another high-lifted Jeep. We got a gentleman really enjoying himself in the back of this uh, 61 Chevy wagon here. For those of you guys who are, uh, you know, my age, and remember riding in the rear-facing back, what we used to call the, the way back of that station wagon. Those, those were good times. The only problem is if you leave that rear window open, you get asphyxiated from exhaust fumes. Maybe that's why my parents always put me back there. Angry sounding C6 Corvette coming through. C5 Corvette. 
Thank you. I'm over here in all the fumes. I'm starting to get a little light at it. Yeah, I uh, definitely, well, I've been feeling like that for the last nine days. Uh, I'm, I'm told by Scott that uh, there's a lot more cars in here. Yeah. We got a 62 Bel Air? Hell yeah. Got that one right. Okay, coming up, one of the more popular, I'm not sure if it's an E Camaro coming up to you. How are you? One of the more popular Camaros that we had here at the SEMA show this year. Yeah. Once again, folks, uh, don't forget to check out all the upcoming auctions that the leading auction company, Meekum Auctions. You can check them out at Meekum.com and get a list of over 60 upcoming events that will be taking place in your neighborhood over the year. It's Meekum.com. Yeah. For a little Mazda action. All right, Kevin. RX7 Forerunner, did you say? From Alabama. Hey, Joe, that, that uh, 68 Camaro you were telling me about, that maroon colored car, I was just informed that that thing was driven here from Massachusetts and they're driving it back. There is no trail. Yes, I remember. No trail. There's a little fun ride coming up for you, Kev. Yeah, absolutely. We gotta, we gotta keep the crews moving, friends. Appreciate everybody bringing, bringing everything they got. I think this guy brought a couple things that he had. A little, kind of a chop and swap. Comfortably fits about 20 people. And he's wearing a cartoon shirt from back in the day, Kev. We gotta, we gotta keep it moving, friends. Kevin, I think you're going to enjoy a little bit different look. Way back, what's this, maybe a 55? 58. 58, thank you. 58 Impala, this thing is, folks, you're never going to see another car like this as long as you live. This 58 Impala with all this carved steel detail work on it is unbelievable. It's How many man hours on that, Kevin? Oh, zillions of hours. Right? It's not a graphic, it's not a stick-on that is hand-carved steel. Unbelievable. And you know, one of those vehicles that could just slip by in this maze of awesome vehicles, but each one of them, a story in itself. Oh, totally, totally. Very cool stuff. Great looking little vintage Nissan. Well, every time I turn my head, there's just another amazing one-off Camaro rolling by, Kev. Yeah, well, 69 Camaros are very popular. I believe this was a Detroit Speedville car. It came out very, very nice. Showing uh, a nice stark white and uh, two-tone orange with the satin gray and white wheels. Interesting uh, color choice on the wheels on that 69 Camaro. A late Mustang followed by a late Guinea. Backed up by a GTR. And, and a Dodge Challenger. I think that was the Dodger Ford McLaren that we've seen so far. Yeah, uh, yeah, beautiful looking McLaren. This one's in blue. These cars, uh. You know what happens, Kevin, when they sell these guys these doing cars, a little doing a little flame show for us tonight. We need to keep it moving, folks, but see the problem is when they're oh, yeah. those guys are leasing those cars, the salesmen tell them that's how they're supposed to drive them. They're creating monsters. Time and time again. I don't know, McLaren was uh it's a very cool car. I don't know if he's getting used to the clutch or what's going on there. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a newbie. Reynolds. He'll figure it out eventually. Yes. <laughs> Just not soon enough, Kevin. Okay. All right, there's this guy again. I think he was looking for the Universal Studios uh, entrance, Kevin. Oh, yeah. 
he really got the point when he was building that one. Whole thing's bed line. What do we got here, Kevin? A little stretch. Man, is that a Lexus or an Audi? What is that thing? That's a great question. It's kind of like a Lexus badge, the one behind it. Yeah, yeah, it's a fleet of them. <laughs> Metro Police in action. I want to thank our Metro officers who are here on site throughout the SEMA show, going to be with us to the end. A little clean Chevelle action. Keeping us safe. And oh, yeah. All you need right there, Kevin. A little 68 Chevelle. All you need. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I also dig this truck right behind it. So what do we do with the front end of this uh, Chevy pickup that makes it look so unique? Well, this is off the bigger truck platform, but it's been adapted to a pickup truck. So it's the, uh, the K series instead of the C series. So this uh, really has that industrial look, but the rest is kind of a C chassis. But Phantom four-door, because of course those never came in a crew cab. Kevin, I'm a little speechless over this next contestant. I'm gonna let you take it away. The Jeep on the tracks? Yeah. Yeah, this guy goes, you know where this guy goes? Anywhere he wants. He does. You know what that guy has? What does he have? Hemorrhoids. <laughs> I'm sure it's far more comfortable inside than it looks. Look at him, he's out of here too. It's not like it's just, you know, crawling along. It crawls quickly. Uh, Kev, I'm happy to report I've been reduced to one site of vision now. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to look at our sponsor logo wall above the building for a moment as the 58 billion candle power LED light bar shines on my eyes. Yes, it's like cheating on the eye test. Thank yeah. God they made those logos big enough to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a nice little Henry Power. Yeah, 66 Charger. Charger. Yeah, looking good. I love that stuff. Great, great looking car. These things are really cool from the factory. And these guys took it up about 100 notches. They kept one of the cool themes of the electroluminescent dash panel. Uh, so the gauges, back when this car was new, they had a nice blue glow to them. Today, you need to keep your eyes on the gauge because that has a Hellcat powertrain, if I'm not mistaken. A clean little SS on the 60s. Followed up by a, a big brother new Camaro. Oh, this, uh, this gold Camaro that's coming across, this is another real treat to see because if you're all familiar with the Riddler Award at the Detroit Autorama, you know, the, the highest award bestowed on custom cars, this was a grade eight contender. This was one that uh, was going for the big prize. Uh, really amazing amount of fabrication and custom work on that Camaro. Not many people get to see that thing driving around, but we all get to see it here tonight. Well, Kev, let's see if you can get this guy to turn his lights on. You want me to have him turn his high beams on? I don't think you're going to get the headlight action out of that. I'm mesmerized right now by the LED light backing plates on this green rim pickup truck, making those giant billet wheels just glow. This uh, this 69 Chevy right here, it's, it's the classic two-torn orange and white, but instead of a C badge on it, it's got a Cummins diesel badge. A lot of work on that, make it more drivable. A lot of torque. 800 horsepower Cummins diesel and a vintage 69 long bed lifted real high, blowing some black smoke, very cool. I'm starting to cry over here, Kevin. This yeah. is another 51 Chevy pickup truck like the one I sold. What did it done? I got a 54 horsepower. We've got the most radical looking Jeep you're going to see here tonight. Thanks for coming out, guys. So, our friend here in this Audi is about to remove his rear view mirror right from the windshield. Great looking car. Plus 54 horsepower. Just buy a chip too. Just had to see my man Juan from Mexico coming up having a good time at the SEMA show like so many others. Welcome Juan. Yeah, glad you're having a good time. Make sure you come over Juan with all your friends over to SEMA United, which is located right in the platinum lot. They'll be going on until 10 o'clock tonight. 
little automotive hijinks happening over there? You think? Just a couple. This little Ford pickup truck does not sound like a stock late model Ford truck. It says it's got a Whipple supercharger on it, wide open exhaust. But I'm digging, really digging this 51 truck. Any roadkill fans out there? <laughs> Amazing what Farberger and Finnegan created, isn't that Kevin? I just learned that this 51 truck was a, a high school project, and uh, the sponsor logo on the side is the Blaster Corporation. We've all used the Blaster to uh, bust loose nuts and bolts for many, many years. I bet they had to use several gallons building that thing. That's cool. <laughs> Kevin, did you get a chance to see the roadkill vanishing paint? Yeah, Challenger? Oh, uh, here it comes, the vanishing paint. Right on. Driven by our friend John McCann. John McCann from uh, Carcraft? From Hara. Oh, that's right, you got bumped up. Welcome, John. What's going on, How's everybody doing? Welcome to the SEMA Cruise. Tell me what you're driving. This is the Vanishing Paint Challenger, and it's already overheated. It's already overheated, right? <laughs> that's one of the downsides of the SEMA Cruise when you have cars that are what we'll call minimally engineered. Yeah, I had to let it cool off for a little bit. I was sitting on the bridge over the freeway, but. Uh, Keeping an eye on the water temperature right now. I got gotcha. you. Well, we have another few seconds before you idle off. What's new? What's that? What's new? Oh. Uh, lots of stuff happening in uh, Hot Art Magazine and Roadkill. So, subscribe to Motor Trend On Demand. Right on, here's the man who creates a lot of that content that you like at Hot Rod Magazine, Mr. John McGann, ladies and gentlemen. What do you say, Kev, his radiator was overheating? Yeah, the car's overheated a couple times already. He's had to pull over and let it cool off, and he's watching the, uh, the, the temp needle climb as we were talking, so. There's a, there's a term for that. Yeah? That's, that's roadkill. That is roadkill, that is the term. There we go, our friends from American Trucks. Awesome job they did there. Huge monster truck. So many big lifted trucks here. Again, just a good sign that everything's working well in the industry. It's I'm an indicator of things. Digging the Jeeps, really digging the vintage Datsuns, the Z cars that we're seeing. This one's got uh, eight stack injection. Looks to be about a 240. 10 stack injection, oh my goodness. Bring it home now. Good old fashioned 90s diesel Chevy truck done kind of sport truck style, flames front to back on a modern wheel and suspension. Kevin, Very, we, have a, we have an onslaught of big trucks. I do. And beautiful women. We've got a, uh, a very cool Chevelle pulling through. Custom hood on this one. Trick suspension, it's lowered, it's got brakes. Great color. So some of these big ones coming through next, this two-tone gray. Or